North Carolina State hopes that its recipe for Halloween weekend treats will serve up the top spot in the Atlantic Division and establish them as a team to beat on that side of the ACC. Russell Wilson has his team a couple of whiskers away from being undefeated. He's fourth in the nation in total offense. But tonight, he squares off with Florida State's Christian Ponder. The Knowles undefeated in ACC play and ready to go. What else you want? Prime time, ESPN, national television, passing county watching. You got him on your back. Let's ride. You got him on your back. Let's ride, baby. Hop on our back for the ACC Atlantic Showdown between Florida State and North Carolina State. Kickoff not far away from Raleigh, but now back to the studio. Lou Holtz, Mark May, and John Saunders. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Charles Schwab. Get the help your money deserves. Talk to Chuck. The Home Depot, more saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. And Pop Secret, for a great movie night, make it pop. Football primetime served by Applebee's tonight in the ACC number 16 Florida State going on the road to take on North Carolina State here in Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh eight of the last nine meetings between these two decided by 10 points or fewer and none more entertaining than the wild shootout a year ago Jermaine Thomas going for the touchdown he had 188 yards that gave Florida State the lead when it was tied Russell Wilson Five touchdown passes, and it looked as if the Wolfpack would get the win, but Burt Reed, for the second straight year, scores the go-ahead touchdown. Jamie Robinson seals it with an interception, and after 87 points, more than 1,000 yards, the Seminoles had a three-point victory, and here come the Wolfpack tonight. these two teams have played entertaining games in recent years there is more than entertainment value at stake tonight in the ACC Atlantic the winner of this game has the all-important head-to-head tiebreaker should Florida State beat North Carolina State the Wolfpack would be virtually eliminated from consideration for the Atlantic Division title what a Thursday night matchup we have for you glad to have you along Reese Davis Craig James Jesse Palmer Jen Brown is going to join us in just a little bit well, Jimbo Fisher's first season as head coach at Florida State has really reinvigorated the Seminole program, Craig. Three times in the last four years, Florida State has finished 7-6. and six. They can get their seventh win tonight and put together their first six-game winning streak in six years. Hard to imagine. It was just last year we were talking about Florida State not being invigorated. And what did they need to do to get it going? Well, Jimbo Fisher expected and prepared for the head coaching job here at Florida State. He had a plan for what he wanted for his football team. And he told that team, if you take care of the little things, fellas, go to class, train right, eat right, do the little things, the foundation, the fundamental foundation will be there for you to compete and win games. Don't focus on winning games. Focus on making sure you're doing the little things that you have to be successful with. I admire him, man. He's done a, he's done a great job stepping in early following a legend. And a guy who's really bought into those theories is quarterback Christian Ponder. He's been up and down this season. He's been really banged up. He suffered two separate injuries to his throwing arm this year. The most recent being a swollen bursa sack on his right elbow that he sustained against Boston College. Now, the bye week last week came at a great time personally for Christian Ponder. He was able to go back, rework some of his throwing mechanics. He's now using more of his core muscles and his leg muscles when he throws. And head coach Jimbo Fisher told us this past week in practice, Christian Ponder was throwing the football as well as he's ever seen him throw it, and that's great news. He's going to make some big-time plays tonight against a defense that's going to bring a lot of pressure. And North Carolina State, good season so far in Tom O'Brien's fourth year, but about that far away from being undefeated. And really, Jesse, the season has been marked by those near misses. Tonight could erase a lot of that. The first three 
several years under Tom O'Brien has been marred by injuries, and this team has been scratching and clawing just to get to bowl games. This year, the team's relatively healthy, and they're playing for an ACC title. Now, Tom O'Brien acknowledges that this is the biggest game he's coached since being here at NC State, but with a conference loss already, he's relegated to the fact that if they lose tonight, they will not compete for an Atlantic Division crown, even though there's four regular season games left. He tells his team every week, every game is like an ACC title game. It's never been more true than tonight. Well, if they're going to have a chance to, to stay in the race for this title, they've got to have great defensive effort out there tonight. They can't give up the big plays. Florida State's offensive line allows their running backs big opportunities down the field. This is going to be a challenge for NC State's defense. They can't sit back and get hit in the mouth. Florida State's offensive line has figured it out. They will come after you and get aggressive down the field. And Jimbo Fisher would love to get that running game going early on in the Seminole head coach is with Jen Brown. Coach, your quarterback Christian Ponder is dealing with a bursa sack injury in his throwing arm. What should we expect from him tonight? Uh, he'll, be, he'll be fully healthy. He had the best, maybe the best three days of practice he's had all year since the injury's healed. We expect him to be 100 percent tonight. You come in tonight's game 4-0 in conference play. NC State 2-1. How important is tonight's game in taking control of the division? Well, it is very important, but you know we can't get outcome oriented. What we're going to try to focus on just playing well in this football game, then we'll let the results take. You know, to see what happens with that. But it is important for us to play well. We need to. Play well. All right, thanks. Good luck, Thank Coach. You very much. All right, Jen, it seems to be a perfect night finally for football here in Raleigh. Temperature in the low 70s. We do have some humidity. Pretty nice little rain shower about an hour and a half ago here in Raleigh, and a light breeze going on as the fans had some t shirts put out on the seats so that the entire stadium would be red and white. Those guys just went ahead and painted their bodies instead of putting on those wet t shirts in North Carolina State will kick off. They won the toss and deferred and Florida State will have it on offense first. A very dangerous return man in Greg Reed primary kickoff returner for the Seminoles and Josh Joukowsky is ready to get us underway here in Raleigh. And off we go in the ACC Atlantic. It is Chris Thompson who will return the kickoff for the Seminoles and he has stopped at the 15 yard line. So our first look at the Florida State offense tonight and just announced today a finalist for the Campbell Trophy, the academic Heisman, Christian Ponder. I did their last game against Boston College when Ponder had that arm and that elbow and that burst of sack hit. It really impacted his strength of throws across the field. He's a three-year starter for Jimbo Fisher. He knows all the intricacies of this offense. His head coach cannot say enough good things about his senior quarterback. Ponder was on course for a record-setting season last year before being injured in the first snap of the game. Ponder will come out throwing, and his first pass is complete to Willie Halstead. What about the impact players when the Knolls have it? Well, left guard Rodney Hudson's an All-American. He leads an offensive line that has paved the way for a unit that's averaging 212 rushing yards per game. I like a quarterback talking about the offensive line. Nice job, Bob. <laughs> I'm going to go with a receiver. Burton Reed leads the team in receptions. Had a 42-yard reverse, a big play against Boston College last game. And Hardy of North Carolina State. He is the most disruptive player on that Wolfpack defense. The former gold glove boxer is going to have to bring a fighting mentality tonight as flags fly for a false start on the Seminoles' second snap of the night. Still second down. So penalties, a little bit of a problem at times for the Seminoles. The yardage not really that bad. Losing about 61 yards per game. They're getting about six penalties per game, and they get one in the early going here tonight to turn a second and two into a second and seven. First carry of the night for Jermaine Thomas. Thomas, who went for 186 yards against the Wolfpack last year, is up close to the first down mark. It's so important for Florida State offensively to stay ahead of the chains and stay on schedule because this NC State defense is one of the best third down units in the entire country. Uh, and one of the reasons they've been successful at Florida State on third down this year really is that offensive line. They are usually in third and short. It is strength on strength. The Seminoles, 18th in the country, com converting nearly 50% on third down. The Wolfpack holding teams under 30%. Hit in the backfield, and the Knowles won't get it. Ty Jones, the power back, swarmed under it was Nate Irving who was there first. It'll be three and out in Florida State's first possession. Well, how about 
this offensive line getting smoked at the point of attack right in the middle of the field. The right guard who's filling in Brian Stewart getting a start tonight didn't come down with the right angle and the nose got right in the backfield immediately. They tried to run behind two four year starters in center Ryan McMahon and left guard Rodney Hudson. Nate Irving was a semifinalist for the Butkus Award making a stop. Florida State punts it away T.J. Graham. He's got great speed but not have an opportunity to get started and he'll be stopped at the 50 yard line. So now for the first time tonight we will see Russell Wilson. Wilson had a huge game against the Seminoles last year throwing for 349 yards in a career high five touchdown. Russell Wilson is one of the best quarterbacks in the country that nobody talks about. He's averaging 332 total yards per game. That's fourth in the nation. But he's had some turnover issues lately. If he plays like he did when we were here watching them against Cincinnati, NC State's a really good football team. Wolfpack will keep it on the ground. Dean Haynes getting the first carry of the night. How about the impact players when North Carolina State has it? Wide receiver Owen Spencer is the deep play threat for his quarterback. He's averaging 20 and a half yards per reception over his career. Well, we're going to go two defensive players now. Brandon Jenkins on that defensive line. Seven and a half sacks leads this team. They are very active up front. And on the back line for the Seminoles, the explosive Greg Reed led the nation in punt returns last year, but he has four career interceptions, a couple of them this year. He has all the skills of a lockdown corner. Again on the ground, Haynes with his second carry, and he'll have the first first down of the night for North Carolina State. Reese, you made the comment earlier in the broadcast that, that NC State's just a few plays away from being undefeated. And, and at times you see how spectacular of an offense they can be. Turnover problems that Jesse mentioned. Russell Wilson on three interceptions in each of their two losses. Haynes will have it again. This time Dean didn't find much running room. He got nothing. It'll be second and long. If you are a predictable offense against Florida State's defense, you have absolutely zero chance. It's a Florida State unit that leads the country in sacks with 30. There's a lot of pressure on offensive coordinator Dana Bible for NC State to mix this thing up early, not let them just pin their ears back. Wilson has time. Now Russell will run with it. Going to pick up about three, maybe three and a half before Kendall Smith, the middle linebacker, makes the stop. And, and you know, that defense you're talking about, Mark Stoops, the defensive coordinator, has come in here and he's really encouraged the guys to understand what he's looking for on spreading the field, having lane responsibility, your gap, do your job, and your teammate does his job. We're really good. And that's big tonight because quarterback Russell Wilson is very athletic. If you allow him to get out of the pocket, he can convert third downs with his legs. Third and six on the slam. Wilson right on the money and making the grab is number 88, Quentin Payton, the freshman from Anderson, South Carolina. NC State's receivers tonight will be covered well when they run their routes. They must fight hard for the ball. Florida State's secondary very good at staying and hugging the receivers. Tremendously accurate throw by Russell Wilson, not giving his wide receiver a chance, putting it right in the middle of his shoulders for the first down conversion. Back to the ground, stumbling as he tried to make the quick handoff with James Washington. Washington just his sixth carry of the season. Looks like NC State offensively has come out in a lot of forward wide looks, trying to spread the field, open some running lanes for those young running backs. If the old turf monster hadn't tackled the ball carrier there, that's a big run because Florida State's linebackers had gotten balled up and walled off to the inside. NC State seems Bet on trying to establish a running game. They're eighth in the ACC so far this season. Most of their damage in the nation's seventh ranked passing attack. It'll be second and 11 for Russell Wilson. And another run for Washington. Washington getting some more carries at this stage of the season down to about the 25. Reese, to your point there, and that, that's saying something because Florida State's defense over the last five games have given up 112 on the ground. I mean, they used, and, and, a, and a couple of those were big plays by Montel Harris at Boston College. So you take those numbers out, and this defense against the run is strong. Another third down situation for the Wolfpack. 
Wilson complete Washington first down into the red zone and Washington down to the 11 yard line. It'll be first and 10. Kendall Smith making the stop. It's a nice job by Dana Bible, the offensive corner, getting the running back James Washington isolated one on one on middle linebacker Kendall Smith. He gives him a shake to the right. It's man to man underneath. It's an easy completion and an easy first down for NC State. And now here is one of the top red zone defenses in America and Florida State being pressured by the Wolfpack. Ian Haynes back into the game. Haynes tripped up. Dana Bible being able to dial up a call like that and getting one on one with a back out of the backfield with a linebacker with all that space to go to. Uh, he's got a lot of experience 33 years coaching in both the NFL and in college. He's done it. He's seen it. He's dialing up a nice game plan early in this one. After that play the last 10 red zone plays against the Knowles defense zero yards dating to B.C. Wilson to throw it's complete to his tight end George Bryan stopped and knocked down short of the goal line. They're going to mark George in about the two remember they can get a first down without scoring a touchdown and the Wolfpack putting together an impressive drive. Well you're going to see you're going to see some crossing that takes place on the inside Jesse and this offensive line holding them out giving receivers a chance to get open. You see George Bryan again working on middle linebacker or sorry that's Mr. Alexander at the linebacker level getting open. Wilson keeps it himself. Russell surging ahead and it looks as if he can get enough for the first down. It'll be first and goal if it stands up. NC State coming off of a bye week and head coach Tom O'Brien told his offense he wanted them to get better in the red zone. Heading into tonight, they're only scoring on 76% of their possessions. That's tied for 98th in the country. They got an opportunity here knocking on the door. I'll ask you guys the question. The last game that NC State played, the coaching staff said they looked from above at the box and said, are our guys playing in quicksand? They look a little, little quicker tonight. They look fresh. And Brian gave his day guys about four days off, and they'll try to respond with an opening touchdown drive. Wilson on the sneak. Touchdown, North Carolina State. I think this is great patience by the quarterback allowing the hole to open goes right to it and that NC State offensive line gets the credit on that touchdown drive. 12 plays 51 yards it ate up a little over five minutes on the clock. Joukowsky puts through the extra point and just like that NC State is up seven to nothing. Wild offensive show last year. What will we see tonight? And BCS Countdown Show will not only show you who's at the top, but who's in contention for the other BCS Bowl bids. Both of these teams, Florida State and North Carolina State, that's the goal. When the ACC get to a BCS Bowl, the players talked openly with us about it this week. This is North Carolina State's last chance. They have to win this game to keep that dream alive. And Russell Wilson led his team on an opening march, over 51 yards, taking advantage of the short field, putting the Wolfpack up 7-0. Florida State getting set to get the ball for the second time tonight. Joukowsky puts a foot to it. Chris Thompson will return it for the Seminoles. Excellent kickoff coverage once again by North Carolina State. College football coming up this weekend. It is Roadblock Saturday, and Saturday night in the Pac-10, Michael James and the Ducks roll into the Coliseum to take on USC and Matt Barkley, who is having a Heisman consideration-worthy season. What a great year he's having. If SC weren't on probation, we'd be talking more about the numbers that he's put up so far. USC last year in this matchup gave up 613 yards of total offense. Can they slow down with Michael James? Darren Thomas, they've had a bye week to get ready for this one. Come and see the Buckeyes and the Gophers. You can check it out on ESPN.com. See what games in your area. Screen pass to Thomas. Thomas knocked down by Michael Lemon from his defensive end position. Getting out to cover the screen. Let's go back and talk a little bit about that NC State freshness and, and what Tom O'Brien did. That was really good that he says, hey, we recognize that we had a tired team. We I mean, gave them four days off. Well, they're a young team. 58% of their scholarship players are freshmen and sophomores. 
10 or 11 of their 10 22 starters are freshmen and sophomores they're just mentally and physically exhausted after the seventh game of the season they needed the break Ronnie Pryor his first carry of the night goes for nothing it'll bring up third in about three for Florida State so uh, this is where Christian Ponder on third down really needs to be alert because NC State loves to bring pressure. They'll give you those exotic blitz looks. They don't sit down. back. That's the no. one thing that Mike Archer and John Tenuta, who's now joined this staff, are totally against is sitting back and getting punched in the mouth. One thing Jimbo Fisher said was that his team would have to handle the blitz and then find opportunities against that blitz to take some shots down the field. Just like to pick up the first down and stem some of this Wolfpack momentum. Ponder complete. And along the sideline is the sophomore Willie Halstead. Willie stepped out of bounds after the catch. We'll have it to the 34, and it'll be a first down for the Knowles. Well, Christian Ponder goes after true freshman cornerback David Anderson, who's giving a lot of cushion to Willie Halstead on a third down. You got to get up and you got to be physical. Challenge that throw. I'm not sure did he step out of bounds right there. Just a toe, I think. Yeah, just a little toe. But you know what? I I've seen now with a couple of out balls, Christian Ponder's arm is indeed strong. It's okay tonight. Play action. Ponder taking one of those shots. Got a man out there and it's batted away. He was looking for Burt Reed on the coverage C.J. Wilson and Brandon Bishop. The one thing defensive coordinator Mike Archer wanted to see from his side tonight was whether or not they were playing with confidence. You have a flag, Jesse. An ineligible receiver against Florida State, probably as a result of an alignment error, one would think. Against East Carolina two weeks ago, they were down 21 nothing in the first quarter. They gave up almost 500 yards of offense. It would have been easy for this team to kind of, you know, carry their, their tail between their legs going into the locker room. But so far early, they're competing. They're flying around. And I think, you know, they've learned from this season, for instance, that Virginia Tech game. You know what? They jump out and, and, and had a big lead, and they realize all of a sudden that they were on a very hostile environment there. Special teams didn't show up. Big kickoff return. So, you know, they, this is a young, inexperienced team that's learning how to be consistent. So after the five-yard penalty for the ineligible receiver, back him up five, 15, and it should have been intercepted as Ponder threw it right into the gut of C.J. Wilson, and he couldn't hang on to it. <laughs> this, is a, this is a busted route. For sure, because you've got two wide receivers running in the same pocket, in the same area there, and so uh, oh, it's just a just slip down. The receiver couldn't get back to the inside, but that's how lucky. Having said that, Christian Ponder's got to be careful. You know, it's a bit wet out there in the grass. These footballs may get a little slick as the game goes on. You got to keep these passes down. And Wilson probably would have scored with it, which he has done with both of his interceptions this season. C.J. just missed an opportunity for his third pick six. Jumping into the neutral zone, and, and Florida State's going to get that five yards back they lost on the ineligible receiver. Offside, defense number 91 made contact. Five yards, still second down. It was Marcus Kuhn, 24 year old junior from Germany, who was a little bit over anxious. So it'll be second and ten for Ponder and the Seminoles. Florida State tries to establish a little bit of offense. They've done a great job running the football this year, top 20 in the country, but not much so far tonight against this pack defense. Flag. Almost complete to Thomas out of the backfield, but got more laundry on the deck. Illegal motion, offense number eight, five, year, five yards, previous spot, still second down. Now the disgust on Jimbo Fisher's face is Taiwan Easterling, junior wide receiver's call for the illegal motion. It's funny, one thing this team has done so much better under Jimbo Fisher as head coach is they've really reduced the penalties this year. They're only averaging six and a half per game right now. That's already the third penalty. You see Jimbo Fisher upset. 
Have a little heart to heart with Burt Reed. <laughs> Burt's taking a break, getting near full. Ponder on the option. And Ponder known as a throwing quarterback, but he certainly has running skills. He had a game against Miami a couple of years ago, and he went for 144 yards. Hasn't run as much this year, but he can be effective. He did it real well late in the fourth quarter with a quarterback run design plays against Boston College that Boston College couldn't account for. But Jesse, on a field like this, if you cut on the inside foot and it's slippery, you're going down. Craig, I was just going to say that's the third player, the fourth player I think tonight we've seen already slip on this wet surface. You mentioned earlier, pretty good rain about an hour and a half before game time. Now he's still adjusting to it. Third down and ten. Ponder has to get rid of it. And couldn't quite wait in long enough to hook up with Rodney Smith, and it'll bring up fourth down again for Florida State. And the Wolfpack makes another stand. Well, here, here's this Mike Archer, John Tanuta defense, and you're seeing two guys up the middle of the field, the linebackers. As soon as the back stays in the block, linebackers are coming, so they're not sitting back. This defense could not get off the field last year on third down. They brought in John Tenuta as a linebacker coach with his new pressure packages. They have been much improved on that critical down. Pressure coming. Wolfpack got close to getting the block. T.J. Graham will make the fair catch inside his own 25. Wolfpack marched it right down the field the first time. What does Russell Wilson have for you when you come back? ESPN's College Football Primetime is served by Applebee's. See what's new on Applebee's two for 20 menu. Classics you love and new flavors you'll crave. And in part by Chevrolet. Every model is backed by a 100,000 mile five year powertrain limited warranty. All of those silver footballs paying tribute to all of North Carolina State's football coaches. The current one of which is Tom O'Brien. Brian's in his fourth year at NC State, and he put together a winner at Boston College, eight straight winning seasons, seven straight bowl victories, but still looking for his first winning season here at North Carolina State. Jesse mentioned at the top of the broadcast, a lot of injuries, a lot of defections during Tom's first three years. They seem to have it put together behind Russell Wilson this season. Wilson getting some heat, and he's just going to throw it to a wide-open trainer on the sideline as Nigel Bradham was bringing the heat. And you know how it's just so well coached the fine points of football when you watch that defense there the end man the line of scrimmage peeled back to get the tight end who was going to the flat and then bailed off of that but it gave enough time for a linebacker coming over to hug I think there was take a, it away I think there was a bust on that play wide receiver Stephen Howard was playing the X receiver into the boundary he didn't even run a route he wasn't even out there trying to turn around and look at his quarterback you saw Russell Wilson kind of look back at him like hey man I'm trying to throw you the ball. So instead of throwing it, they'll let Mustafa Green carry it and the freshman. Nearly five yards per carry on the season now on third down in the last drive. Russell Wilson and Wolfpack excellent. And it was the offensive line that gave Wilson the opportunity and the backs to get open. The reason they were so efficient on that drive, they stayed on schedule. They ran the football effectively on first and second down to keep those third downs manageable. Two short passes and then the two sneaks from Wilson and well, this one sneak from Wilson and the sneak for the touchdown, and they'll try to make it four for four. Heat coming. This time the Seminoles will lead the nation in sacks. Might not have gotten a sack, but Mr. Alexander affected the quarterback. Got a hand on the pass. Look at the line. Look at the defensive line and the stunts, the movement there. The, the way that things changed out, Mr. Alexander off the corner there, right into where the blitz peel was coming for the uh, running back. That's a difficult throw for Russell Wilson to have to negotiate. He's only five foot eleven. Mr. Alexander, 6'3", puts the hands up. He can't throw that thing over. Punting has been an issue for the Wolfpack this year. Andy Leffler punting it to one of the most dangerous return guys in the country. And Greg Reed will have an opportunity from inside his 15. Reed reversing field. Greg Reed. Midfield and finally dragged down in North Carolina State Territory. J.R. Sweezy perhaps saved the touchdown and a scintillating return from the guy who led the country a year ago. Maybe that's the spark that picks up Florida State because as we've watched this game unfold, NC State's playing a little faster, a little better than Florida State. Well, Leffler uncorked his longest punt of the season at 58, but it'll be a net 18 after this great 40-yard return from Greg Reed. So the Seminoles will have it when you come back.
A short punt set up North Carolina State's first scoring drive. A long punt return puts the Seminoles in good position late in the first quarter. All right, well, there's, there's a lot of strategy that's taking place right now. Brian Stork is the right guard. Now, he is a freshman replacing, in this ball game, David Spurlock. And so look at the first step. He misses there. This was earlier. So he, you can't cut that guy off his responsibility. They had to punt. Well, David Spurlock's a three-year starter. You're going to see him here again at the right guard spot. He's going to be in pass protection. His color goes right, right away, but he has to keep his eyes downfield and look for the linebacker, Terrell Manning. He's not able to stay in his gap, and that's what forced Christian Ponder to throw the football. Rick Trickett, offensive line coach, is one of the best in America. He'll figure it out. He'll give help up front. So first and ten for the Knowles. They'll keep it on the ground with Jermaine Thomas. Thomas gets down to about the 43-yard line. You know, Trickett... Uh, put together a lot of those great offensive lines that Rich Rodriguez had at West Virginia before coming to Florida State a couple of years ago. And this team has had a lot of success running the football this year. At the start of the year, when you look at their five offensive linemen, they had two four-year starters and three three-year starters. And three years ago, this was a big makeshift bunch. We called a couple of their games, and they were struggling. They were young pups, but they've developed and evolved. Line looking at a second and seven. Ponder getting heat. Christian has had to throw it away. Right in his face once again was Terrell Manning. He spent a lot of time in the Seminole backfield. Now you're going to see now the right guard, right tackle, right side of the offensive line. Watch the tackle and the guard work together on the big man. The back goes up for the guy on the end line of scrimmage. So they're going to figure out how to double up and not put an island for their freshman out there. It's going to be a challenge. You see how running back Chris Thompson was out in pass protection against an end. He's only five foot eight, 185 pounds. Florida State does not want a little running back blocking big defensive ends or linebackers in this game. And a little bit of confusion as Ponder calls the timeout. Burt Reed barking at a teammate right now. And the Seminoles trying to get their offensive act together down seven in the first. Back in Raleigh, Florida State looking at a third down as you take a look at tonight's weekend menu brought to you by Applebee's. It is roadblock Saturday for some highly ranked teams, guys. But Missouri putting up a season high 486 yards of offense last week in a huge win against Oklahoma. They get another great test against a very good Nebraska defense. Now, I'm looking forward to watching Michigan State. I mean, they are up high in the polls now at five. Challenge on the road, but I like what they're doing. It just seems like it's meant to be. Kirk Cousins, Mark D'Antonio, all the issues, they've overcome a lot. I like the, I like the makeup of the ball club. Christian Ponder has missed his last three pass attempts. Flag flying, Ponder throwing, complete first down, but not sure it's going to stand. Burt Reed to grab inside the 25, but I think the Seminoles might have been moving. See if Jeff Flanagan agrees. Illegal formation. Number 67 was in the backfield. Five men in the backfield. Five yards previous spot. Still third down. It's a left tackle, Andrew Datko, who's not lined up on the line of scrimmage. He's bowing off the ball at the left tackle position, and that's why they get called for too many players in the backfield. You see Christian Ponder's reaction after a big completion. Not again. And the gate's a 19-yard gain. Datko is a guy who, very aware, he'll often help wide receivers make calls, and perhaps he wasn't close enough to the line of scrimmage that time. He's trying to aid his offense. So after the 19-yard gain is wiped out, Ponder will try to get 11 on third down. Christian throws before he's hit. It's two and it's caught. Touchdown. Burt Reed with the catch. I'm not positive he was going to him, but he went right oh, on man. it. There is a flag in oh, the backfield. Wow. It was 77 offense. Oh. 10 yards, previous spot. Still third down. 
Zebri Sanders is called for the hold and another huge game wiped out by penalty. I, I can't say enough about how the change in the makeup and the chemistry of an offensive line is impacted when you lose a starter. He's got his arm clearly out there of, around the defender and back to back plays especially the touchdown that's call the, back. That's the second throw we've seen Christian Ponder miss high on that worked out. They got very lucky but again he's going to have to start aiming a lot lower. These balls are going to get intercepted down the road in this football game. 66 yards from two plays wiped out by penalties. Five penalties tonight, all on the offense. Now Ponder's got third and 21. He'll try the screen. Thomas. Not close to the first down. Terrell Manning on the stop for North Carolina State. Five penalties already for Florida State, shooting themselves in the legs. You cannot put yourself in third and long situations against one of the best third down defenses in the country. And so here you are, and you're thinking, okay, Tom O'Brien, I've got a football team right now that is playing well. And my defense, I'm able to rotate my defensive line. They're fresh, and they're frustrating the right side, that new makeup of that offensive line. DJ Graham waiting on the punt. He'll let it hit. And it'll bounce into the end zone for a touchback. Got another flag down. This one resting at the 37 yard line. See what Jeff Flanagan has for us this time. Holding during the kick, number 82 on the receiving team. The ball, re the play resulted in a touchback. The penalty be 10 yards from the 20 yard line. First down. The Wolfpack will start on their own 10 as we take a look at this week's BCS standings brought to you by Discover. Auburn moving to the top just ahead of Oregon, Boise State, and TCU. All right, now, Risa, I know. What's, what's your word in there? At, 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 and at, oh. and at, and at. <laughs> that, was your, that was your word of the week for all of us, right? It was. In the BCS countdown show, at is the word of the week. All of the <laughs> number one teams that have fallen have been at someplace, they've been on the road. Where a lot of the upsets have occurred this year, with the notable exception, I know there are a couple of others, but Texas beating Nebraska and Lincoln, most of the highly ranked teams to fall have done so when they've gone into hostile environments. Just as Florida State is in right now, the Seminoles ranked 16th in the BCS, falling behind 7 0, very sloppy on offense as Dean Haynes picks up about five on first down. You know, it's funny, the differences between both of these head coaches, we asked them both, with all the significance of this game in the Atlantic Division. Did you talk to your team? Are they aware of what this game means? Jimbo Fisher of Florida State said, we haven't even addressed that. Tom O'Brien did not shy away from it. His team knows what's at stake here tonight. Another run, a strong, tough run on the inside. Again, Dean Haynes. Haynes is a guy who is a redshirt freshman and he spent last year much of it as the scout team quarterback and started this season as a defensive back in fall camp but a couple of weeks before the first game O'Brien wasn't really pleased with the production of his running backs so he swapped Haynes to the offensive side of the ball and he's had a, a pretty productive team or season well, over 300 yards he and Mustafa Green have car carried much of the running load for the Wolfpack this year Russell Wilson Pushes his offense ahead and moves the chains. This offensive line showed up because Florida State's front four are really good. I am surprised. I did not think that NC State's offensive line could take care of it like they are. NC State is very young up front. They have four sophomores starting on their own line. What a challenge going against such an athletic, such an aggressive front. This may be the best front they see all year. Another run. This time is James Washington. Washington will be out across the 25 as we head down toward the 22nd mark of the first quarter. See what kind of tempo the Wolfpack wants and whether they'll get off another snap before the quarter comes to a close. They will. Wilson. we we'll have to run with it. Russell has open field. Wilson across the 50, and he'll get out of bounds, and the final play of the first quarter is a beautiful one for North Carolina State, and the nation's fourth leader, fourth leading player in total offense, 
has a tremendous run. All right, this is a classic example of you have to win in space. You can be a spy if you want to be, but once Russell Wilson and those legs take off, middle of the screen there, number 29 has no chance. If you're good, you're good. You ain't, you ain't. ACC on a Thursday night, second quarter about to start. North Carolina State up 7-0 and on the move against Florida State. And on that last play, NC State uses something that they did earlier in the game to convert a third down on. Here's running back James Washington, just going to run an option route on the middle linebacker. That's going to clear open a big space over the football for Russell Wilson to run through because Florida State not able to get a presence in front of him. You see his athleticism? He absolutely freezes. Mr. Alexander at the second level, and he's able to run and get that first. You know what's just noticeably missing in this deal is the is the front line of Florida State getting off blocks. They normally are extremely active. They can put pressure with just four, and they just haven't been able to do that. First snap of the second quarter, and Haynes has it, and he takes a big hit at the 40-yard line. It's a 21st play in NC State's run. 16 of them have been runs. And Craig, to your point, I think Dana Bible, offensive coordinator for NC State, has been able to slow this pass rush down with their ability to run the football early. These D linemen now, they have to engage. They have to try to find the football. They can't worry about rushing upfield too fast because these young running backs from NC State running right by them. Wilson this time. Team that leaves the nation in sacks gets one. Brandon Jenkins would be his eighth, but there is a flag on the play. Had plenty of those tonight so far, too. This time it'll go against the Wolfpack offense. Illegal motion. Offense number eight. That penalty will be declined. Third down. You know, Dana Bible also went on and talked about about staying in the now and teaching his players to stay focused on play after play after play and especially from his quarterback Russell Wilson and he, and he believes that as the quarterback gets older and more mature that throughout the course of the game if you've got 80 snaps 70 of them are going to be really good you know you're going to stay focused and in that zone tonight he stayed in the now third and 11 big heat second straight sack ball might have come loose too but I believe that Andrew Wallace was there to cover it up. Watch running back James Washington, number 24, try to pick up this pressure look from Florida State. He's looking around, pointing at himself right now. Here he is. He's going to try to get involved and block, and watch what happens. He gets absolutely run through. He never got his leg set underneath him. I think what he was doing, Jesse, the tackle got beat and the end hit him. I think the back was going across all the way to try to hit the outside. How about, how about the technique, though? It wasn't good by anybody. <laughs> <laughs> that was total focus. That was one of those out of the nows. <laughs> all right, now NC State kicking it toward Greg Reed. He does something he doesn't like to do. Call for a fair catch, and now more flags are flying. And we have had a laundry spectacular in the first quarter and nearly two minutes here in Raleigh tonight. Reed made the fair catch. It looks as if they were marked at the 11. We'll wait and see what our referee, Jeff Flanagan, says the call is. A lot of these penalties have just been mental mistakes, illegal shifts and motions lining up in the backfield. Two fouls on the play, both personal fouls, each team. Number 31 on the kicking team, number 20 on the receiving team. Those penalties will cancel for the first down. I think what happens when you when you have a game going like this with, with so much expectations on it, there they are clearly just messing with each other. Oh yeah, that's ridiculous. That just makes no sense. But they both teams have been off 12 days, so maybe they're a little sloppy coming back. A little slap and tickle fight, that's all. <laughs> Love tap. This is one of the great atmospheres and traditions in college football. And what Coach Bowden did here and the tradition and legacy in which he left, you know, we're very blessed and honored to have it. And uh, that's what gives us the ability, I think, to go on in the future and get our, get our program back to the top. Getting back on top of the ACC is one of our top goals.
Uh, only Joe Paterno had more wins at the highest level of college football than Bobby Bowden in recent years. The Seminoles have struggled by their lofty standards, but right now, in Jimbo Fisher's first year, Seminoles sitting atop the ACC Atlantic. They haven't won the league since 2005, with a six and one record, the only loss to Oklahoma. And Jimbo's changes have certainly had a great impact. As the Seminole offense would like to have an impact on the game, something they really haven't done thus far tonight. More whistles, more flags. False start, number 67 offense, five yards, still first down. 67. You know, one thing Jimbo Fisher learned coaching under Nick Saban and Bobby Bowden was to be himself and do things his own way. You take a look at some of the things he's brought to this program. Nutritionist, speed guy, full strength, uh, strength and conditioning staff, mental conditioning experts, sports psychologist. He's picking the foods his team eats. He's having his teams eat every meal together. He's rearranged the locker room, put plasmas in the weight room. Don't mess with my menu. <laughs> <laughs> and you just like for some of it to work to get him a first down right now as we check in with Jen Brown. Well, Jesse, you're talking about the nutritionist, and, and Craig, you might like this. So these guys, you know, they have a strict diet every day, but they do get a cheat day. If they win on Mondays, they get to pick their own meal, and guess what their favorite is? It's honey fried chicken. I've never had it. Sounds pretty good to me, but that's their cheat day, and that's what they choose. I'd be cheating every day. It's a good day for me, because we're going to eat now. Ice cream Sunday, baby. <laughs> Coach, I'm averaging over four a carry, man. I'm going to eat over four ice cream Sundays per week. <laughs> Ponder has it knocked down and almost intercepted. Michael Lemon, the senior, has had a great impact in the game already tonight. Once we saw him chasing down a ball carrier in the flat and now knocking down a pass. Again, this defense for NC State looks active. They look hungry. They look rested coming off of that bye. Just a great job understanding that he's not going to get to the quarterback. So watch his eyes, anticipate the throw, put his hands up. This defense has forced, coming into the game, 33 and outs. That's the eighth best in the country. They already have two of those in this game, looking for number three. Ty Jones. Ty staying on his feet, but he'll be stopped well short of the first down. Terrell Manning, the first to hit him, and it'll be another punt for Florida State. You get the sense watching NC State, the sense of urgency from their players, understanding how important this game is. There are a lot of veterans on this team that are so used to losing, they're used to getting beat up, but they're out here competing, fighting for a chance to play for an ACC championship. Powell gets it out of there. E.J. Graham tried to get over to it. Didn't get a handle on it, so the Seminoles will get a very good roll, and North Carolina State will have it back at its own 32 when you come back to Rob. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Experience truly great engineering today at your authorized dealer. And Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Taking a spin down toward the state capital of North Carolina here in Raleigh. The hometown team, the Wolfpack, off to a 5-2 and two start and trying to hand Florida State its first ACC loss. Early in the second quarter, Reese Davis, Greg James, Jesse Palmer, Jen Brown with you. Halloween weekend indeed. Jesse's going to miss the Halloween party. He's joining us in the BCS <laughs> Countdown Chill Sunday ah, night. I feel honored. Thanks for bringing that up. Russell Wilson has a man. It's Owen Spencer and a fine play by the freshman Xavier Rhodes to knock it away. <laughs> wow, is this athleticism and a little bit of luck all together wrapped up in one. But Xavier Rhodes watched the ball fake in the backfield of Russell Wilson. It fooled him. It was a double move by Owen Spencer. They fooled the freshman Xavier Rhodes. And Russell Wilson told us in our meetings, they got a corner out there who's only a freshman, hasn't played a lot of football, and you got the sense they may try taking a shot on him early. They got to hit those now because these cornerbacks remember. Second down, Wilson. Can't hook up with Daryl Davis. It'll be third and ten. A little bit more push now coming from that Florida State defensive line. Can't you feel it? They'll figure it out on the on that staff over there. Mark Stoops is saying, "Hey, look here. They're doing this. Let's work on that." You know, and if, if you're NC State, you have to capitalize on big time opportunities. You cannot miss those touchdown throws against this type of defense. 
Pump fake from Wilson. And he fires it over the head. Jay Smith. And it'll be three and out for the Wolfpack. So Wilson has hit just three of his eight passes in the first half. From a guy who's already thrown for over 2,000 yards and 18 touchdowns this year. We mentioned that he's had some problems with interceptions, uncharacteristic of him. He holds the NCAA record, throwing 379 consecutive passes earlier in his career without being picked off. Has not been picked off tonight, but not much of a rhythm in the passing game so far. Wolfpack punts it away. Greg Reed. He had a 41-yard return earlier in the game. This time he's going to get about five. And the Seminole offense will try to get something brewing on the road as they trail by a touchdown in the second quarter. Nick and Carter Finley Stadium. Time to look at tonight's intelligent move brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. It's time for Florida State, particularly on offense, to start getting more intelligent and stop with the penalties. They've had some big play opportunities downfield. They had a touchdown called back. Because of these self-inflicted wounds, they already have six penalties on the game. I think they've got to settle in. Rick Trick, an offensive line coach, trying to get his O-line settled in on the, the stunts, the crossing stunts on the defensive line and the aggression that NC State's had tonight. All right, offensive line has an opportunity. It's Ponder and his O. They have it back. Christian will throw on first down. And he'll throw to Burt Reed. Reed chased out of Brown. He gets a first down as we check in with Jen Brown. Well, you guys just mentioned the O-line with Florida State unable to get anything going. Things are getting pretty pretty heated over here on the Seminole bench. I was standing behind the offense, and O-line coach Rick Trickett absolutely was undressing his O-line. Uh, let's just say that his inspirational words aren't fit for TV, but let's we'll see if that motivates them here in this next drive. They can. I think they can really help that offensive line out by throwing like they did right there. They need to back up and get the aggression out of that defensive line at NC State. Maybe some language Rick learned in the Marine Corps. As Ponder completes it to Reed, he gets across the 45. This will be very interesting watching this from Florida State offensively. Two weeks ago in a loss against East Carolina, the NC State DBs were very soft at the point of attack being blocked in the bubble screen game. That's something that Florida State's going to try to go after. C.J. Wilson was particularly soft in that loss. These corners are going to have to get physical up front and personal with these wide receivers. Almost missed a handoff. Good thing Ponder didn't. Running into the open field is Ty Jones, and Jones is inside the 20-yard line. First down, the best play of the night for the Seminoles. Well, Tom O'Brien said we cannot allow the big plays and running tonight. I want to watch where they have a mishap here. Look over on the left side, left side of the offensive line. They have a loss of responsibility broken down in their gap jobs, and, and it just absolutely gave the big run by Florida State. That is the 18th run of over 20 yards for Florida State this year. Over 7% of their runs have gone for over 20 yards. That's impressive. This time, Thompson slips a tackle. The speedster slips as he tried to make a cut on the inside. C.J. Wilson is there along with Donnie Cole. A passing game now that Christian Ponder came out with on this series kind of opened up that NC State defense a little bit. Well, I think as long as NC State keeps giving so much cushion on the perimeter of the field with their cornerbacks, and if they don't press, they don't challenge these receivers, that free access is something that Christian Ponder is going to take advantage of all night. Seminole offense has been excellent in the red zone. Ponder completes his pass. That is tied in Bo Relliford. Bo's going to be a little bit. Well, they like they're not coming in and marking it close to the 10 yard line. That's where they need to get for the first down. The red zone is a great area for tight ends to make catches. Oftentimes you, you see two high safety looks. There's a lot of room over the middle of the field to manipulate for a tight end. Christian Ponder knowing exactly where to go with that football. But don't you feel it, the, the throwing ability now coming on with Christian Ponder in this drive and what it's doing for this offense? Just opening them up. And now that offensive line, the Trickett was admonishing earlier, needs to come off the football. Third and one. Ponder's going to have to use a timeout. 
Very smart. Guys were lined up wrong. Don't press it. Call time. Oh, well, Fisher sees his team putting together his best drive of the night, but still plagued by mental errors. Florida State on third down when you come back. Wolfpack howling right now, trying to exhort their defense. NC State up 7 0. Florida State with a third and short at the 10. Don't forget, Saturday afternoon, you can see a pair of games on ABC or ESPN. Michigan State and Missouri both trying to stay perfect and both with very difficult road games. Spartans at Iowa, Tigers at Nebraska. College football presented by Kay Jewell at 3 30 Eastern Time. Third and short. Jones, who had the 34-yard run to get the Seminoles in position, picks his way down to the five. It'll be first and goal. Well, we talked about the right guard playing now for the injured David Spurlock. Brian Stork, 52. Watch on the right side of the offensive line how he caves down at the snap. See that? Just drive your man inside. Good job. One thing the coaching staff told us, he is a brawler. He may be young and inexperienced, but he's not afraid to put his face in the fan and get active. He got his face in the fan there. Fan knee. <laughs> and it gives the Knowles a chance from the five. Jones. And gets stuck after picking a couple, and Christian Ponder sort of limping around after making that handoff. And we talked about the success Florida State has had in the red zone this year. They're scoring on 91% of their possessions. Teams that run the football well oftentimes are the best red zone teams. You have to be able to run the ball down in this area. And it's oftentimes you see it's a quarterback who can get underneath the center and take a snap. They've had 23 of 34 tries now have been touchdowns. Scoring sixes, not just threes. It's good for 31st best in the country. With a little perspective and well, the state would love to get six here. Ponder on the roll. Christian going to try to take it himself. He took a couple of big hits. Stretch for the pylon. It looked as if he hit it. And they're marking him short of the goal line. Whew. Tremendous effort by Ponder nonetheless. Uh, you know what? I'm not so certain that he was down, that that ball didn't get across that pylon or at least touch it. Get a good look at it here. If he touches the pylon, not down, not down. Ooh. Oh, that's Ooh. probably that is like that. That's reviewable. I want to take a look at that. I think they're yeah. going to have a look at question will be did he come down out of bounds before making contact with the pylon mm -hmm. mm -hmm. looks good they need indisputable video evidence to be able to overturn this call right here he's still up he uses his left arm to brace himself the back of his hand with the football touches the pylon remember if you touch the pylon yeah, that's breaking touchdown. the plane that's a, touch that's a touchdown I think that's uh, a touchdown I do too what courage from Christian Ponder you know here's a guy wearing a compression sleeve on his right arm, that that bursar sack injury he had two weeks ago, uh, it's it's moving. The pylon, the pylon has moved. Now the towel, not part of his body. His body is not down yet. Well, it's really tough to see there. The the pylon appears to be dislodged before before his body hits the ground. And and the point of the ball, yeah. even before no, he true. gets there. The point yeah. of the Very football, even before it hits the pylon. Good point, Craig. I, I think they're going to. I think they're going to give him six on this one. You know what I'm saying? I mean that that yeah. elbow injury will th that'll blow up again as soon as someone hits him on that that arm and he's extending the football with that injured arm. You try to go for the touchdown. That's a leader. Yeah, I was I was going back and forth with Mayday in our four downs earlier today, talking about the courage and the leadership of Christian Ponder and what he means to this team. That's how he got hurt last year, though, just going for it. Well, the ruling on the field is that Ponder is down. Yes, officially we call it the one. As I look down at the football, it's, it's a mere inches away from the goal line. But Ponder, now the hand, you know, it's a little different uh, in terms of the rules. If your forearm goes down, you're down. Your hand can touch the ground and you're still up. So Ponder kept himself up with the hand and then extended for the for the end zone and it appeared Craig I know I thought you were right on it in terms of the nose of the ball you don't have to hit the pylon if the nose breaks the plane it's a touchdown too We're taking a long look at this again indisputable video evidence is the key phrase here right. I have to find a clear view that he did not touch the ground before that back of his hand the nose of the football looked like across the goal line. here's the call after further review the runner was not down, extended the ball, touched the pylon. That results in a touchdown. So Ponder's 
tough run is rewarded after a two minute six second review and now we're an extra point away from locking it up at seven. Remember these two teams last year put up a thousand plus yards of offense at 87 points. The back and forth game at the Knowles won 45 42 and this was easily Florida State's best offensive drive of the night. Eight plays 75 yards. Dustin Hopkins. Well, it nestles it inside that upright to tie it at seven. Florida State getting back to what they do well, running the football on this drive, and it's capped off by a very tough run from their senior leader quarterback, Christian Ponder. And we are knotted up seven apiece. Well, you know, this Saturday, ESPN has a special preview of the brand new college football channel, Goal Line. For the afternoon, Goal Line will be your college football remote control, taking you around the country to the biggest moments from the best games live. Check out a special preview of Goal Line this Saturday afternoon, 3.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. on ESPN2. Some old cheerleaders probably enjoying goal line. I like to think of that as sort of what Mark, Lou, and I experience in the studio, and Jesse, you and John experience, being able to have a bank of monitors in front of you, watch everything. Well, you feel like the guy, oh. you feel like the architect in the movie The Matrix. You just got all those TVs yeah. in front of you. Life is good on Saturdays, watching this crazy season unfold. And Florida State getting set to kick it away. Dustin Hopkins, second in the nation in touchbacks. And drive his kick through the back of the end zone and get another one. Knowles got it done on the ground on the last drive. And they were able to do it in a lot of different ways. They were able to spread the defense out, which allowed for a big gashing run early in that drive. They lined up in conventional fashions to pound for tough yards. And then Christian Ponder able to use his wheels to get on the perimeter to score that touchdown. Yeah, there were five rushes in that drive, three passes. I thought what was really important was there were two first down passes in that drive that opened up those five rushes. All three of the Seminole tailbacks with big play capability. We saw Ty Jones getting the big play. Now NC State needs Russell Wilson to get going. Wilson will keep it on the ground to Dean Haynes. Football gets loose. And the Seminoles have it. Well, Haynes, we saw in the Cincinnati game, had a little trouble putting the football on the ground. And Nigel Bradham appeared to knock it free. Now, no, sorry, go ahead. Now we're seeing that Florida State linebacker level start to attack the ball carrier. When Bradham comes in, he sees Ron immediately, feels, fills his, what Mark Stoops calls, foxhole. He got in his foxhole that had the football helmet on the ball. The first four games of the year, the Wolfpack offense only gave the football away four times. In the last three games heading into tonight, they gave it over ten times. That's been the difference. Two losses in that span, giving it up now down inside the red zone. Kendall Smith recovered it. Ponder to throw. Got his man in the flat. Making the grab is Lonnie Pryor, the fullback, Brandon Bishop, on the stop. It's really been a, a tale of two seasons for NC State offensively with turnovers. You see that. Interception, three fumbles early, but really it's been Russell Wilson lately in charge of most of those turnovers. Throwing too many picks, trying to do too much with the football. They have not had an issue fumbling recently. That one right there just cost them. Now the Wolfpack defense trying to rise up. Thomas. Main Thomas, a short gain, it'll bring up third down for the Knowles. You see the trend on Jimbo Fisher now starting to throw on first down to loosen up, to get to a to at least a third manageable. You always hear defensive coaches talking about sudden change situations, having to run right back on the field and answer the bell. This would be a huge win for NC State. They could hold Florida State to a field goal right here. Knowles just two of six on third down tonight. Ponder. Christian inside the five. He's got the first down. First in goal, Florida State. Well, you see another look. This was the look they got in the fourth quarter against BC last week in their last game, where it's the design quarterback run. Ponder's legs are really efficient. We've always talked about the greatest attribute of an athletic quarterback is his ability to move the chains on third down. You're seeing Christian Ponder showing you why right there. 
I'd like to welcome those of you watching on ESPNU now. Florida State trying to go in to take the lead. Ty Jones pushes into the pile. Seminoles trying to take advantage of the Dean Haynes fumble. Took over inside the red zone, and now they're inside the five. And there is a Seminole down. It appears to be the right tackle, Zebra Sanders. Well, the coaching staff talked about the last two football games Florida State played heading into their bye week were very physical contests against Miami and against Boston College. They also felt like the bye week came at a perfect time for them to try to get guys healthy before tonight's contest. And they were. They were uh, mentally and physically tired after the Miami game. No question about that. Uh, and, and so they needed the break. And, of course, now they've got a couple of situations here on the offensive line. If, if Sanders goes down and, and Spurlock was the right guard, he's out with his second concussion. So he's down and you got Brian Stork, a freshman playing in there. So that's probably going to bring Henry or Elise in number 59, who used to start at left tackle. So he at least has some experience. He was in there while Andrew Datko, the left tackle, who's a veteran player, had a shoulder injury against Oklahoma. And he's playing basically because the doctors told him if you can tolerate the pain, you can go as Sanders makes his way to the sideline in the right side of the Florida State offensive line now a pair of freshmen to see if they go left behind Rodney Hudson their star left guard until let Ponder throw it Ponder runs right good enough touchdown Seminoles so the turnover Cost the Wolfpack as FSU takes the lead. Well, Mr. Orlees must have been paying attention on the sidelines because he gets called into duty, and what does he do? Comes down and watch the creaming blow. Beautiful job. <laughs> Created a nice crease for Ponder to go in for his second touchdown run of the night. And the point after is perfect from Dustin Hopkins in his 14-7 Noles. Well, after his win last weekend, Denny Hamlin finds himself just a touchdown behind Jimmy Johnson in the closest chase in history. Touchdown minus the extra point. Now they head to Talladega where anything can happen. They'll try to avoid the big one. That's the big wreck with the restrictor plate racing. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues. The Amp Energy Juice 500 at Talladega on ESPN Sunday at 1 Eastern. You see Hamlin just six points behind Johnson as he goes for his fifth touch. It's very important right now at this point for this NC State offense to now try to get something going. You know, they started off this game great. First drive, go down, score a touchdown. Then they had an opportunity, a wide open Owen Spencer for a touchdown pass. Ball's underthrown, and they fumble on the very first snap of their last drive. It's on this offense now to pick it back up and get some of that momentum back. The Super Bowl's fired up, and the Wolfpack leader is not. His team got off to a great start, but it's hit a little bit of a lull, and it's been something that O'Brien has been concerned about this year. A lot of his guys are younger guys and still learning how to sustain their performance. He was hoping the bye week would give them some energy throughout the game. They certainly started strong, and now they'll have to answer the bell as the Seminoles rank 16th in the BCS and taking the lead. Hopkins had a touchback on his last kickoff. And he'll have another one. A pretty good weapon right there. Pack will start on the 20, and Russell Wilson starting to struggle a little bit. It's been really a tale of two quarters for both these quarterbacks. Christian Ponder under tremendous duress early in the first, but he's able to bounce back nicely here in the second quarter. On the flip side, Russell Wilson goes three for three on his first drive on the way to a touchdown, and now he's been struggling later in the second quarter. Wilson has not completed a pass since that opening drive. Guy who missed the summer playing pro baseball in the minor leagues in the Rockies organization, but he's had a good stretch. He's put together big numbers. Struggling a little bit here tonight. And Russell does complete one to Owen Spencer. 
Spencer get it out to about the 27. You know, Russell Wilson was very anxious to play this football game. I had a chance to talk to him yesterday, and he said he really was excited to play Mark Stoops' scheme. He said, you know, I get bored when you play the same defenses week in, week out. Mark Stoops brings a lot of pressures. They play a lot of coverages. I can't uh, wait to get out there. No, let me tell you something, young man. <laughs> Don't challenge Mark Stoops on defense. He's got a lot of experience in that bag. <laughs> Oh, Russell's been around a while, too. The heat's coming. Russell takes a big hit and delivers it complete to Jarvis Williams for the first down. Now, this offense, they've told us this season that they felt like the name should be the perfect storm, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning they can move the ball around. They can run it. they got the quarterback, the tight end. they got receivers. This is a beautiful job of staying and being poised. Now it's time for that perfect storm offense and those players to step up. Russell Wilson, understanding where his hot throw is. They had an unblocked linebacker, and Mr. Alexander. Nice job staying in the pocket, throwing it tough. On the ground this time. Get it up across the 35-yard line. Running the ball is Mustafa Green, the freshman. This is where having some experience out there really would help you because NC State has to answer Florida State. Momentum has shifted. You don't want NC State can't afford to let Christian Ponder run back out on that field with this offense. Wilson fires it high. He's looking for Stephen Howard. We'll bring up third down and six for Wilson. Well, we talked about earlier, Craig. You were mentioning how many plays could Russell Wilson stay in the zone tonight and be dialed in. And on that play, Florida State brought a corner blitz from the boundary. Wilson had a wide open throw right away to the right side. He did not see it. Throws it in completion, and now they're in the third and long. Use James Washington out of the backfield as a receiver tonight. Wilson instead going to take a shot, and there's a miscommunication. Washington was standing open, probably would have gotten the first down. Wilson took a shot down the field, and nobody was home. And now Christian Ponder will get a chance to get the football back, as the Wolfpack will have to punt. Now you, you're starting to see this Florida State defense working together the, the, up front. You're seeing it with the secondary. You're looking at the coverages. I mean, Florida State's a good football team starting to find their feet. The always dangerous Greg Reed has one touchdown return this season. It came against Samford. We had a little break from the laundry for a while, but now the flags are flying, and a second one coming in just for good measure. Ball start. Offense, 27, five yards. Still fourth down. So the Wolfpack will back it up, and Andy Leffler will, will unleash a season-high 59-yard punt earlier. The punting game has been problematic for the Wolfpack for part of this season. Leffler gets no pressure. Reed's going to have to call for the fair catch, and he makes it. At about the 27-yard line, so the last 3:15 coming up here in the half, Seminoles have taken the lead, 14-7. Reese Davis, Craig James, and Jesse Palmer with you. Jim Brown working the sidelines. So, what do you expect to see now from Florida State in the last three minutes or so? You want to see Ponder air it out a little bit? We've seen first down throws, and that really opened up NC State's defense. First down throws. The last three first downs they've thrown the ball. I think we've seen a lot more balance here recently from Jimbo Fisher in terms of the play calling. And again, there's a lot of youth in that secondary right now for NC State. If they do not get aggressive and start challenging these receivers, Ponder will take advantage. And Ponder again on first down. Burt Reed has it. Reed. Oh, if Reed could have stayed in bounds, he would have scored. Instead, he stepped out at the 46-yard line. A pickup of 18. It could have been 77. Well, you're going to see C.J. Wilson at cornerback again. Look at all the cushion. I mean, that, that is a give-me out route for a senior quarterback in Christian Ponder who's accurate. I understand you're afraid of the big playmaking ability of Burt Reed at wide receiver, but you have to start challenging this guys. Oh, just a toe for Reed. Ponder. Got Reed again. It's the exact same thing again. Well, and you know what's happened here is you're not you got to dial in too defensively to understand what's going on. When you're throwing the ball on first down, again, throwing the ball on first down, and Ponder getting in a rhythm. 
that arm, you know, if you've got a banged up heart and you use it, it gets to be a little smoother. BG had a big night and scored the game winning touchdown against NC State last year. Takes a break as Rodney Smith checks in at wide receiver. On the ground this time. Ty Jones, who's gotten the bulk of the work at running back. Florida State uses three running backs. Jones has gotten a lot of tonight. He's stopped by Sweezy and Irving. And at the same time, now this offensive line starting to work together and, and starting to feel what they're trying to accomplish up, up top and, and back in the game. A good job there of Zebra Sanders are coming back and being healthy enough to fill in where he started. Third down and two facing the Knowles. Go ahead and call it one, long one. Jones turns the corner, first down and a lot more. Ty Jones lowers his shoulder, got a good block from his fullback Lonnie Pryor, and the Knowles can have a great opportunity to put more points on the board before the half. Did you see how patient Jones was to allow his fullback prior to get out there? Wait, wait, let the let the block occur and then explode. Florida State did a great job sealing the edge for that running play to get outside. Nice job by the tight end, Bo Ralph, for pushing down inside. Now there's a lot of time here. Minute 47 seconds, you got a timeout, take your time. You get a touchdown, I can be demoralizing for a young NC State team going into halftime. Christian will throw for it, or at least he wanted to, and pulled it down. Antonio Miguel is there to make the stop, the kid from American Samoa. Mike Archer told us yesterday is consistently graded better than anyone on his defensive line. He was a the guy they thought had to have a big game tonight. He's going to line up a lot on the All-American Rodney Hudson. Faced a lot of double teams from center Ryan McMahon. He's got to be stout tonight. Keep his eyes on Ponder. Make sure Ponder stays in the pocket. Ponder to throw. On the flat and a big hit will keep Lonnie Pryor from hauling it in. It'll be third and 12. D.J. Wilson, who's been picked on a little bit tonight, delivers the big stick. You know, what's so impressive is on this NC State defense, their linebacker, Audi Cole, number 42, you see how deep he was in coverage? He's a tremendous athlete at 6'5", 240 pounds, able to play the run. He's athletic enough to get back the pass coverage. He's really kind of been the marquee guy on his NC State defense this year. Say that he's athletic enough, he could be the fifth defensive back. He's a big dude. McGill jumped quickly, Ponder threw it out to Smith, but Florida State offensive line still hasn't moved, <laughs> believing they caught the pack in the neutral zone. <laughs> is that Rick Trick and trademark? Now they can get up. <laughs> this is one of the coolest things in college football. This offensive line is taught to freeze if they think someone goes offside, so there's no question to the referees that it was the defense that went offside. They cannot move again until Christian Ponder comes back and gives them what's called a chill call. <laughs> I think, I, you know what? I think I'd be a wise guy if I were on defense. I'd run over and push him down. Yeah. I'd be like cow punching. <laughs> well, Ponder knows he can run. He got out of dodge when he saw all those red shirts coming. <laughs> Thought they might have a free shot at him. So the five yard penalty will back state up. With one second over a minute to go in the first half, Florida State with a third and seven as we check in with John Saunders. Well, Reese, coming up on the IBM halftime report, a visit with Kirk Cousins, the quarterback of Michigan State, unbeat Michigan State. Dr. Lou pays a visit to an NBA superstar, plus the May Day Minute. It's all coming up on the IBM halftime report. Reese, back to you. All right, John, we'll look forward to it. Kirk Cousins, boy, what a season Kirk Cousins has had. They, this, that offense is as balanced as any in the country. They've got the two great running backs and Edwin Baker and Le'Veon Bell, and Cousins has been very quietly, extraordinarily efficient for Michigan State. I, I like the fact in the completions in the second half last week oh. when he had to against Northwestern, 17, two touchdown passes. His team has had to come back in the second half each of the last two games. He's played his best football late, and that's the mark of a great leader. Christian Ponder trying to lead his team to another score. He'll need to convert a third and seven with one minute, one second remaining here in the first half at Carter Finley Stadium. Ponder. 
He's trying to run for it, and he flips it ahead, and he's got the first down. Burt Reed. Uh, th this is now Mike Archer and John Tenuta try to come with the pressure off the outside, and you just get an athlete making a better play than your call. That is a very risky underhand throw with his left yeah. hand, his non-throwing hand. That could have been intercepted down in the red zone. That almost was very costly. He got away with one there. Could have been, should have been. Would have, could have, should have. It was not. Now Ponder throws it with his right hand. He's got a man open. Touchdown Seminoles. It's Willie Halstead. Halstead, the sophomore from Titusville, Florida, has his fourth touchdown catch of the season. Dustin Hopkins on to try the extra point. And right before the half, the Seminoles, who got off to a very shaky start, they have sucked the air right out of the home crowd. The sophomore receiver Willie Halstead doing a nice job just breaking down the soft spot of the zone down the sideline. Quarterback got held. Christian Ponder is able to find him. Right, let's look up here at the top and we can see a number 27, Earl Wolf. See the safety back there deep. He gets caught watching the back of the end zone or the quarterback instead of moving over, seeing the receiver, feeling the receiver, it, hugging him. It was the slot receiver basically running on that diagonal shallow, that route, that was able to hold that cornerback. And Christian Ponder just doing a nice job being patient, letting the window open up and delivering an accurate football. Well, Halstead is a guy that Ponder says is an unbelievable talent at wide receiver. He's starting to learn how to run those routes and his you know, offensive coordinator, James Coley, said own that wide receiver position. See the explosive nature of the Seminole offense. All of a sudden, they have seized control of this game. 46 seconds remaining in the half. North Carolina State now. Are you going to be content when they get the ball back, or are you going to take your shots? You're taking shots if you're NC State, in my mind. With what this game means, down now with 46 seconds left by two touchdowns. Okay. And Let's you got the seventh best passing game in the country. All right, I'm just thinking on the other side. I'm not disagreeing with you, but I think back to the game we called USF, and I know it was B.J. Daniels and not Russell Wilson, but but you remember how devastating that was right That's before that, half? Yeah. Yeah. Different experience factor between both quarterbacks. Yeah, I, I understand. I'm just, just throwing it out there. Dustin Hopkins isn't a big guy, but he's got a big leg, compares it to a golf swing, and this will now be his 29th touchback in 49 kickoffs. That's second only to Oklahoma State's Quinn Sharp. And Christian Ponder in this battle of veteran quarterbacks in the ACC has certainly had the better of Russell Wilson so far. You know, Christian Ponder's numbers were down from where they were a year ago heading into this game and really they say the struggles in the passing game have come because they've had a lot of inexperience a lot of young receivers that haven't been on the same page christian ponder said it's been frustrating at times but they've been winning so he's stuck with it he's showing me really his competitive grit early in this football game running it as well as throwing it wilson hits davis here's a flag in the secondary as darrell lost the ball going out of bounds and a couple of flags back, three of them, four, a ton of them. Everybody with a flag, go ahead and toss it on the ground. <laughs> As if there are no repercussions. <laughs> the defense had 12 men participating during the play. That's 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. Yeah, even, even Mark Stoops knows you can't play with 12, and they're trying to get him off the field there at the snap, but just didn't quite get it there. And, Mr. Alexander caught. <laughs> now again here, three timeouts for NC State. You see Mark Stoops not very happy about that. Youngstown, Ohio, the anger. Younger brother of Bob, Mike Stoops, as Wilson got sandwiched and just threw it out of bounds. I had a treat a couple weeks ago when they played Boston College. After the game, I went up and sat in Stoops' office, and we were watching the afternoon and evening games. And Mrs. Stoops, Bob and Mike and Mark's mother was in there. And the first thing she says to me, she goes, Craig, how nice was our offense tonight? The last eight minutes of the game took that football and held it and didn't give it back to them. <laughs> and, and I laughed. I thought, what mother would think of even time of possession and holding on to a football other than a defensive-minded 
mother. <laughs> it's because she doesn't want to see her son put in harm's way. That's, right? what, that's exactly right. Oh, she was great. Great spirit. Wilson has plenty of time. He'll throw it underneath to Washington, and Washington's not going to get close to the first down marker now. The Wolfpack, they have all three of their timeouts remaining, and they get one quickly to stop the clock. They're going to use one here. 18 seconds left, 17 seconds left now. They get a couple shots, try to get into field goal range. They're looking at at least another 23 yards they need to gain here in a very short amount of time. Try to give their kicker an opportunity to make this thing 21-10. Oh, Florida State has taken this crowd out of the game. It's something that uh, the top teams want to do when they go into the hostile atmospheres, but it's been a very difficult task throughout the course of the season. And this week, we have seven remaining teams in college football, the magnificent seven, if you will, that are undefeated. Six of them have that big two-letter word, act, on their schedule this week. You know what? Utah is just sitting there looking perfect, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Air Force, they've lost their leading rusher, one of their top rushers, and they can still run the ball well. But Utah, their scoring defense, their offense, they're laying right there waiting on OTCU to come out there and check them out. You know, I, I look at five of these games. If I'm looking at, you know, Auburn even at the top, none of those games are necessary gimmicks. You know, you look at Houston, not he's notorious for getting his team motivated, fired up, ready to go to beat a big-time opponent in his own division. He's done it time and time again, whether at Arkansas or Ole Miss. Auburn's got to be careful. Mm. Hence the nickname, the Right Reverend. It's the Rebel congregation together with one accord to rise up. All who think that might happen rise. North Carolina State would like to rise up on offense. Russell Wilson, it's enough for the first down. Russell had a good run earlier in the half. And he's got plenty of arm to get it to the end zone. There's Ten seconds left. A couple of timeouts. Clock, of course, stops to move the change, but NC State able to go ahead and We've use that timeout. We've talked about the slippery conditions. Look at Owen Spencer on this route. He was trying to run an out cut. He slips again on his way. You know, th these teams are going to seriously going to have to go in at halftime and start rethinking about what cleats they're using. They may want to come out with some deeper, bigger studs so they can stay on their feet. Well, I think, you know, when you, when you start talking about your footwear, you have to know where your shoulder pads are. If a player is out there cutting on the inside of their foot, it, they're going to slip, and it doesn't matter if you got an inch, three quarters, half inch. Cleat, that is. Right. 21 to 7. Seminoles have the lead. They, well, the Seminoles had, had a little trouble with the traction in the early going here. Carter Finley as well. Ronnie Pryor, fullback, hitting the deck. Ponder, too, might have picked up a few more. You see that right foot, how he, when he tried to cut back in there and that inside, that volatile? Just see. And it, you know, there was a little rain that came down this afternoon, but it wasn't a gully washer. And Josh Jakowski warming up, and now out of a timeout, we get delayed Offense. game penalty. Five yards. Mm, wow. Still for In the early going, it was Florida State who seemed rattled, making careless errors on offense and lately it has been North Carolina State is Dean Haynes who had a fumble costly one that in, that cost NC State a touchdown Florida State turned it into a score heads to the locker room with 10 seconds remaining in the half and a quick jump on the left side of the FSU defensive line a quick completion I believe there's going to be a penalty that would have been Marcus White that started a little early. Offside, defense, five yards previous spot, still first round. And the good news about this offside penalty, it'll give NC State an opportunity on this last play to throw one. And Russell Wilson has the arm strength to get this thing in the end zone. If he can buy enough time on a Hail Mary, I mean, this is a guy that can chuck it. And you've got a wide receiver unit that averages six foot three. So you got a lot of height jumping ability down in the end zone. Owen well, Spencer's going to be up the top of your screen. He led the nation last year, averaging over 25 yards per catch. And the whistle Time course out. is back out. North Carolina State, third, final charge timeout. So NC State is going to have a second to work with. And 
Remember what happened there. The clock started running again because you had the penalty. Penalty doesn't necessarily stop the clock after the ball is spotted for play. So Wolfpack heads up enough to make sure that they at least get one more shot at this before the half. And, I, and you know what? Russell Wilson's done a nice job. We were debating whether or not to take a knee or go in at halftime. But he's taken what the defense gave him. He didn't force issues. And they've gotten down with at least a chance to throw it in the end zone. You know, I'm really curious to see, regardless of what happens on this play, how NC State's able to regroup in here at halftime. They're a very, very young football team catching themselves now down at home in the biggest game of any of their careers here at NC State. Doesn't it feel, does it feel like to you though that they did, they started really strong and they backed off, doesn't it? Well, I think a lot of self-inflicted wounds. Yeah. A missed wide open receiver downfield for a potential touchdown, a fumble in their own red zone. And against this good team, they'll make it pay. Last play of the half, barring a defensive penalty and it will go as a sack. Marcus White getting in on a sack for the second time tonight in the Seminoles will go to the locker room with a 21 to 7 lead. The Florida State defense has stepped up in the last six drives as we check in with Jen Brown who's with Tom O'Brien. Coach, Florida State's offense really got things going there in the second quarter. What adjustments do you need to make to slow them down in the second half? Well, the turnover changed the whole game right there in the first half. So, you know, we got out of sync with the turnover right there. We just got to find out what gap we're in. We got out of our gaps and made a couple long runs, but the turnover has been the story of the first half. Besides that early score, offensively, you haven't had much success. What do you need to do to get things back going here in the second half? We have to do what we do best, which is we got to spread the field a little more and make sure that we're protecting the quarterback. All right, thanks, Coach. Reese? All right, Jen, the Wolfpack will have it first when the third quarter starts. But right now, Florida State has a 21 7 lead as we join. Mark May, Lou Holtz, who went to four bowl games in four years here at NC State, and John Saunders for the IBM Halftime Report. Take it away, John. <laughs> Halftime of ESPN's College Football Primetime, served by Applebee's. Be sure to catch ESPN's College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, every Saturday starting at a new time. 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPNU as Aaron Andrews joins Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, and Desmond Howard for a full hour of the latest news and happenings from college football. Then, from 10 a.m. to noon, game day moves to ESPN as usual. Two hours of features, inside analysis, and picks to get you ready for all the day's action. We'll be back with second half action right after this. Welcome back to College Football Primetime on ESPN, served by Applebee's. Just about set to start the second half from Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh as Florida State returns to the field. The Seminoles do so, having scored 21 consecutive points after falling behind 7 0. They have a 14 point lead on the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. See the balance in the offense from Florida State and the devastating advantage they've had in time of possession after an opening drive North Carolina State was able to muster very little offensively second half not too far away Reese Davis Craig James Jesse Palmer and Jen Brown down working on the sideline so North Carolina State lost all of its momentum after starting very quickly Craig well you know you see the penalties that Florida State has c committed I mean it, this is really a game where Early on, NC State didn't take advantage of some plays and opportunities. Let's go come back and get them. It's really important right now for NC State to have a monster drive to start the second half. Get that momentum back, and it has to start with quarterback Russell Wilson. He was only 6 of 14 in the first half. He needs to be more efficient. He needs to be more accurate. He has to make good decisions against an unbelievable pass rush and one of the best secondaries in the country. A coverage sack is something that has become part of the... <laughs> part of the entire lexicon at Florida State and that is the kicker getting slapped around Dustin Hopkins he is Mr. Touchback he's had a three touchbacks or a couple of touchbacks in the first half he's a great athlete he could dunk a basketball and this time he's going to leave his kickoff just short of the goal line James Washington on the return Washington a good return out close to the 35 as we look at our coaching adjustments brought to you by Home Depot well, I think it all comes down to Russell Wilson. First drive, three out of three on his passing, and since then, three of 11, and just went totally cold, as did his offense. But I think they have to go back to what they had success with on that opening drive, try to spread the field and give him some open throws. When they have big plays downfield, Russell Wilson has to make them pay for it. You have to complete those in the turnovers. You cannot shoot yourself in the foot. It's been the self-inflicted wounds that have hurt this offense early in this game. And three sacks. And another flag. That's a Levendy bajillion tonight.
Ball start, 79, offense, five yards, still first down. And we'll check in with Jen Brown. Thanks, Reese. I talked to Coach Fisher coming out of the half and asked him what he thought about his team's play so far. He said in the first quarter he felt like his team really shot themselves in the foot, and he was so proud of the defense for really keeping them in that game. He said their poise showed very well, that that's the reason why they're in this game now, and that they need to come back and play 30 minutes of hard-nosed football to win this game tonight. Jim, Florida State did dial up the defense. Mustafa Green, we haven't seen a lot of him. Mustafa is the leading rusher on this team. It's out across the 35 yard line stopped by Marcus White. Now that was just a, that was a well designed play right guard pulls comes around a little power play to the left side Zach got on leading the way and they spread that defense out to allow the box with less players defensively for Florida State bigger rush lanes less bodies to make tackles. That's where this offense has had their success. Green will have it again Mustafa calling Moose. It's like he's going to be just short of the first down. Every Dawkins on the stop. The starting tailback Dean Haynes is not in this game anymore. We saw him on street clothes here just a little while ago. So Mustafa Green, this true freshman, is going to have to pick the pace up now and take over at that running back spot. They're going to be counting on him to get tough turn yards. James Washington in at running back now, and Russell Wilson will keep it on the sneak. Now Russell scored the first touchdown of the night and he'll move the chains. That is Dean Haynes. Haynes took a big hit on the fumble inside his own 20 yard line. And freshman from Tunnel Hill, Georgia went to the sideline gingerly and has not returned. And now you see they've taken his pads off. I'll tell you why it's so important for them to run the ball. They already have given up three sacks and they're going against the Florida State defense that leads the nation in sacks. They have 30 on the season. They get four and a half sacks a game. You don't want to get dependent on the pass. Jarvis Williams goes to the 50 yard line and Jen you have an update on Dean Haynes now yeah if you remember that fumble he got his bell rung pretty hard and, and he will not be returning the game he did suffer a head injury like you said he's got his pads off so we will not expect him to play and hopefully he'll he'll be better after that injury see that last pass by Russell Wilson to Jarvis Williams that's basically an extension of the running game allowing your guys to get in space nice play call by Dana Bobby. Now it's second and short. Let's see if Russell will take a shot down the field. He does not. Instead, he'll opt to picking up the first down. Errol Davis will get out of bounds at about the 40. Now, if North Carolina State can take this opening drive down the field, get a touchdown, then you're back in the game, a little momentum. You see all the movement to the right. Everybody goes right except for the ball and the receiver. It gets the motion of that, se of that secondary. They all move over, and it opens up that toss pitch. It's like the toss sweep. Yeah, it's just an extension of that. Couple of first downs now to get the second half started. Green, oh, a great cut in the hole by Green as he gets down to the 35. He turned to nothing into maybe a three-yard game. But you saw the talent of Marcus White, how quickly he got off his block and made the tackle. I think the biggest deep difference in this Florida State defense this year from years past has been their ability to stop the run under Mark Stoops, this unit is giving up 100 yards less per game on the ground than they did last year. Green's got it again. Green inside the 30-yard line. Vince Williams making the stop, and Mustafa will be close to another first down. Kind of looks and feels like the opening drive that NC State had, doesn't it? That's just a good job by the freshman having vision a missed tackle in the backfield that Mark Stoops won't be happy about. Sometimes the guy that's running the ball is a little better than you are in open space. Bringing out the chains to see if Green got the first down. Do you guys see any significant adjustments in the attack or just better execution by the NC State offense? Better execution so far. I think, again, going back to, to what's worked early for this offense, you're going to see here Mark Stoops is absolutely livid on the sidelines yelling at his unit. I also get the sense that NC State's trying to quicken the tempo a little bit on this drive. They're not huddling as much. They're at the line of scrimmage, ready to go, trying not to allow Florida State to substitute defensively. And the other thing I've noticed, they've been very safe with most of Wilson's throws. He's had, he had interception problems against East Carolina. He had some against Virginia Tech, too. And they, they've run the ball a lot more than we anticipated, and they, he's made a lot of safe throws tonight. But they're respecting that defense and, and not wanting to have them with the time to get to the quarterback. I think offensive coordinator Dana Bible is also protecting his quarterback with play calls. Yeah. 
Right now, you'd think the play call is pretty obvious. Wolfpack needs to get one, and they use the sneak as they have on short yardage several times tonight. Florida State defensively is going to figure this out. Every third and short, it's a quarterback sneak to the left, over the left guard, and it's worked every time. Florida State would be smart to put a lot of weight in that gap because everybody in the stadium knows where Russell Wilson's going the next time they have third and short. <laughs> Behind the left guard, Andrew Wallace, a sophomore from Charlotte. Done a good job helping his quarterback eke out those short yardage plays and now inside the 30 yard line ninth play of the drive coming up. Short game by Mustafa Green. Yeah when this Florida State defense is working their linebackers really do a nice job of filling the lane getting down to the line of scrimmage. I think for, for the casual viewer watching Florida State play tonight compared to how they've been the last couple of years under one of the greatest D coordinators who ever coached, Mickey Andrews, they're a lot less predictable. They mix up their fronts, their pressures, and their coverages. Wilson, wide open green in the flat. Mustafa's still on his feet inside the 20. It'll be first down, NC State. Michael Harris on the tackle, but not before Green moved the chains. Well, Mustafa... Moose Green had 18 receptions coming into this game. Not only can he run, but he can catch. And a really nice job of a natural pick by the tight end, George Bryan, in the middle of the field. And a nice job of Russell Wilson being dialed in, in the zone, in the now, finding his hot route right away. Green. Mustafa took one right in the mustache from Nick Moody and Kendall Smith. You see how he cuts, though, on this grass? That's, that's with your shoulder pads over your feet. You're not gonna you're not gonna slip cutting like he is. Stop for getting a nice round of applause as he heads to the Wolfpack sideline. James Washington is checked in. And Russell Wilson is looking at a second and eight. Opening drive of the second half as NC State tries to draw closer. Wilson. Washington is snowed under immediately. Kendall Smith and Greg Reed on the cover. There's a great example of how this defense plays in sync. They have a pressure. They do a great job in the secondary of route recognition, understanding where the hot throw is. Watch how many gold helmets converge around this football. The back is open early, but not for long. They are dialed in in the secondary. Third down. Wilson. Little bit of room. Russell, touchdown, Wolfpack. So each quarterback has now run for a couple of touchdowns. Ponders added the throw, and that's the only difference. Opening drive each half. Wolfpack marching right down the field. And with the extra point from Joukowsky, they'll be within seven. Joukowsky is perfect. That is just what the doctor ordered for North Carolina State. Russell Wilson guiding his offense down the field. And North Carolina State regains a little bit of momentum. It's a seven-point game early in the third. Opening drive of the second half has pumped a little energy into Carter Finley Stadium. Tuffy, the live mascot, first year on the job for NC State. His team's down by seven now. Yeah, we've been talking about how dialed in the secondary was and the linebackers look right how dialed they in underneath bracket. You've got co total focus on the inside slot receivers and opens up the quarterback. The red zone is the best area of the field for quarterbacks to run because so many defenders have their eyes away from the quarterback trying to read route concepts. We've seen Christian Ponder do it twice early in this game. Now Russell Wilson gets his chance. Wilson with two touchdown runs. Ponder now gets his chance, the first of the second half. Christian ran for a couple and threw another touchdown pass in the first half. First drive for the Wolfpack took five minutes off the clock and really pulled Tom O'Brien's team right back into it. Greg Reed and Chris Thompson like to receive the kickoff from Josh Joukowsky. It'll be Reed. Reed will be stopped inside the 25 as we check in with John Saunders. Well, it's time now for the AT&T All-America Player of the Week. 
And it's Cam Newton of Auburn, number one in the BCS last week against LSU. 217 yards on the ground and two touchdowns. He set the SEC record for most rushing yards in a season by a quarterback going over 1,000. Don't forget, get involved. Text the word VOTE to 345-345 for your chance to win a trip to the national championship game. Well, Cam Newton's impact on that Auburn team has been no, nothing short of remarkable. We saw him in the second week of the season. The way that offense has evolved around his running talents has been stunning. As Auburn in contention for the SEC and national title. ACC Atlantic Division title. The state's here tonight. Certainly cannot be wrapped up if Florida State could put it in a real stranglehold if they could put NC State two games down and the tiebreaker down. Maryland, the only other team in the division with one loss. The Seminoles gave up the touchdown drive to start the second half. And they have it for the first time in the third quarter. Well, early in this ball game, first half, first four possessions, four punts for Florida State. Then their offense figured it out. Their last three possessions, three touchdowns. Second and six. Ponder hit. Ball's loose. Through the beanbag. It's a fumble. Let's see who got on top of it. It was Natanya McGill and Artie Cole back there applying the heat. They'll unpack them. I don't know who had it first, but it's going to be whoever comes out of there. McGill's reaction would indicate that perhaps it's a Seminole, but now NC State looks a little happier. Still no signal from the official, and now they've got one. The Wolfpack got it back. It all starts up front, the push by the defensive line to get into the backfield to get to Ponder. On the right side of the offensive line, watch the push. They start backing up. The center comes over. Ryan McMahon, he just can't drop his fanny and stay strong enough. NC State is very lucky they got pressure because Taiwan Easterling was wide open on the boundary. That's exactly where Christian Ponder was going to go with the football. Here he is right here, going to run a corner out. He's open. Ponder's going towards him. And if this ball gets out and he catches it, that's potentially a touchdown. I'm sure Jimbo Fisher wanted to know if the arm was going forward. And now... Because as I watched, you know, initially it looked like a fumble, but now they're going to have a look at this a little bit closer. And let's see if Ponder's arm perhaps was going forward before McGill could get there. Oh, it's the arm was going forward. I think the question is, does it have control of the ball? And it started going forward. I think, I, you know what? I tell you what, it looks like he's got the ball in his hand as he's going forward. This is a good shot. He's going I, forward. I, I think he's going yeah. forward. I, I think this one may get overturned again. We like to remind you when it comes to replay in college football, the standard is indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field. The call on the field was a fumble. NC State recovering at the 22, which is just a few yards different from where Florida State recovered a fumble by Dean Haynes in the first half. But again, another player on the field slipping, having a big impact on that play. That center, Ryan McMahon, just lost his footing as he was backtracking. He lost his leverage, couldn't make the block. Florida State really hoping this thing gets overturned. The momentum shift, if this stands, will be massive. After further review, the running on the field stands. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, and again, when the official on the field, when the referee uses that language, as you heard from Jeff Flanagan, that means they didn't have enough evidence to overturn the call. Yeah, it, 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 interesting to hear, but it looks like that maybe, you know, just as the hand started to come forward, the ball was a little loose. It's amazing how football is a game of inches, isn't it? Yes, it is. And th th a split second later, and that's possibly a touchdown for Florida State. Instead, it's first and ten. North Carolina State with a chance to tie it up quickly. A quick pass to Owen Spencer. And Owen has a lot of company. Brandon Jenkins, a defensive end out there, to knock him down for a loss of about three. Now, the, the difference in the sudden change on this one is that you had the review. And so Mark Stoops had a chance to rally his defense and tell him to get ready to get on the field. So Christian Potter kind of laughing it off on the sidelines. It's a guy that's a senior. He's been there before. He's been in a couple wars. 
not going to worry about, you know, one little turnover. He's got a lot of football left to play. But this is a great challenge now for the NC State offense that has not been great in the red zone this year. That's one of those phony fake laughs, by the way. <laughs> I've done it too, by the way. I have too. <laughs> Second down, Washington. Now it'll bring up a third down. Nigel Bradham on the stop. But Dana Bible, the offensive coordinator at NC State, trying to decide right now, is Mark Stoops going to come after me in third and long, try to back me up even further, make this field goal try harder, or is he going to lay back, play soft zone, just try to keep everything in front of him? Well, typically when I talk to Mark, he's like, hey, if you drop back and you provide a running opportunity up front for a running quarterback, he'll get you. Wilson just ran the ball in for a touchdown on him before. Wilson, get a chance to run it in again. Russell Wilson, touchdown! Wilson does most of his damage with his arm, but he is fourth in the nation in total offense. And tonight, especially in this third quarter, it's been the feet of the Wolfpack quarterback. We talked about the importance of this defense able to get a pass rush, but keep Russell Wilson in the pocket. You cannot get out of control because he will break contain and score. Well, NC State makes Florida State pay for the turnover. And how about that? Halfway through the third quarter, we're tied at 21. I don't know that you would expect anything else. Eight of the last nine. Decided by single digits. Last year, a three-point game that went right down to the wire, and it looks as if we're headed that way again tonight as Russell Wilson takes it in for the pack. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Chevrolet. Every model is backed by 100,000-mile, five-year powertrain limited warranty. And Dr. Pepper. There's nothing like a pepper. Time for old Tuffy the Tamaskin. You saw a line around there to hop up. Wolfpack back in it. Two <laughs> touchdowns in the third quarter. And coming after the Florida State turnover. We're tied at 21. 7.36 to go. Third quarter, Carter Finley Stadium as the Seminoles of NC State. Battle to stake claim as a team to beat in the ACC's Atlantic Division. Reese Davis, Craig James, Jesse Palmer, and Jed Brown. Glad to have you with us on. Thursday night expected this one to be a tight one at North Carolina State has responded with a vengeance after being down by two touchdowns at the half. Jukowski kicks it off. Greg Reed will be on the return. Reed an ambitious return man was looking for a crease and he got nothing. What about the touchdown Jesse? It is imperative that a defense is able to contain a mobile quarterback in the pocket. Now here's Brandon Jenkins. He's the best pass rusher for Florida State running a twist. He just gets out of control with the spin move. And that opens up a huge lane for Russell Wilson to run through. In college football when you drop seven or eight you're in trouble if it's a running quarterback. You can get away with it in the NFL because the quarterback's going to stay back there and throw it. But when you drop a lot of folks into coverage and those linebackers on the inside turn their backs to that quarterback he sees the opening and he's gone the Seminoles need to answer ponder to throw on first down Lonnie Pryor fullback that they love to use in the passing game three of Lonnie's five catches coming into the night have gone for touchdowns that one getting them out of a hole on first down so one quarterback has come out in the second half and he's answered the bell he's responded he's got his football team back in this thing now how does Christian Ponder now respond now the momentum is back on NC State side we see a continued theme here though throwing on first down seven holes are running into the open field goes Ty Jones Jones into NC State territory before he's finally dragged down. That is his third big run of the night. Ty Jones ripping off 33. And the line blocking up front does their part. But you also see that North Carolina State, and I believe it's Nate Irving on the backside, he runs beyond it. 56 ran beyond the play. Florida State running into the blitz of NC State to gash them. That's something they said they wanted to do tonight. Ponder. 
Pryor just got annihilated. Big hit from Artie Cole. Now this time NC State's front and Nate Irving got to the quarterback, forced the issue, and the Wolfpack defense smelled exactly what was coming. Yeah, Taiwan Easterling, a five foot eleven, two hundred pound receiver, trying to block a very athletic two hundred forty five pound linebacker. It's not a great matchup when you draw that up on the blackboard. Cole is a Golden Gloves boxer. He went for the KO punch. Reverse. Alexander's got it, and then the Wolfpack not biting on that one. Nate Irving was there along with Manning. Watch the speed by middle linebacker Nate Irving right here. Watch how fast he's able to scrape down the line. Once he sees misdirection, runs upfield, he's able to make that play in the back. But that's why he's the semifinals for the Buckus Award. Burt Reed got away with that last week on a 42-yard run against Boston College. Really helped his team on that play. John Tenuta and Mike Archer and this defensive staff were dialed in totally to being aware of Reed on the reverse. Listen to the crowd now. You think this is a big game? Under, oh, he dropped it. He had his man. And Halstead looked up to run before he secured the football. It'll be fourth down. Missed opportunities. NC State had a few in the first half. Count this as another one for Florida State. Just it's such an easy deal. You look up as a receiver knowing you're open and Pondro, he's done that now three times tonight where he's had reactions like that. NC State coming after it. Some contact but no flag. Graham knocked down almost immediately. North Carolina State had the ball twice in the third quarter. They put two touchdowns on the board. That's the Joker in the crowd. Yes, the Joker in the deck for the Seminoles. Wolfpack crowd a little fired up. You see that Russell Wilson for Senate 2010 sign. He could run for higher office right now. A couple of touchdown runs in the third quarter. NC State and Florida State tied at 21. Celebrating its six years sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $2.2 million in scholarship monies. Howling of the Wolf Pack as they two touchdowns down coming out of the locker room now have a chance to take the lead. So they have six first downs in the third quarter to just one for the Seminoles and the way they turn things around offensively in the second half. I'd be interested to see in this drive here now if Mark Stoops doesn't leave a linebacker in the middle of the field. He will not allow that running lane to occur again. This is where the Knowles have been hurt the running of Russell Wilson. That will be the running of Mustafa Green. That's the challenge, really, Craig, I think, for this Florida State defense. Here they are all season long. They've had success rushing the passer, but this is a game they knew that they'd have to be disciplined to keep Russell Wilson in their lane. You can't just be wild rushing upfield. It's really a game where you have to be unselfish. You're not necessarily getting sacks, but you can't. You've got to keep him inside the pocket. And, and you think, you know what, we make him throw the ball while he's completed his last six attempts, so he can throw it as well. Longest completion tonight, 13 yards for Wilson, but he's done plenty of damage on the ground. Mustafa Green has run very well in the second half, and he almost popped it out of there. Nigel Bradham perhaps kept Mustafa from running a long, long way. All right, this is, now this is a, a freshman runner, right? Watch the body of this runner. Green, do you, that looked like Marcus Lattimore, didn't it? South Carolina behind those pads. His nickname is the Moose, and you see why. He's a physical runner, leaves linebackers in the grass. You hear this crowd, they are not booing. Moose. I'm telling you, there's Moose crossing. Bradham, it was Bradham that got run over. It was Parks that ended up tripping him up. Bradham got caught in that Moose crossing. Florida State, according to the offensive line of NC State. Ball star, 64. <laughs> Offense, five yards, still first down. <laughs> That's good. Bradham got caught in that moose crossing. Yeah, got trampled. <laughs> One thing Mark Stoops does not want to do on defense is put a seventh or eighth defender 
in the box to try to slow this running game of NC State down. He does not want to leave shorter corners on these bigger, tall, more physical wide receivers on the outside of the field. It's a, it's a cat and mouse game right now between Dana Bible, the offensive coordinator of NC State, and Mark Stoops, the D.C. of Florida State. First and 15, another run for the Moose. Yeah, it, it is. It is a cat and mouse game, but it all falls back into the offensive line being able to go out and stop the penetration of Florida State's D-line guys. As Dana told us in our meetings, he said it's like an explosion at the snap of the ball. That's how powerful they are. He said it goes kaboom with the violence of these ends and their ability to get upfield. The cornerbacks in the perimeter of the field jamming wide receivers to the line of scrimmage. One of the more violent, one of the more physical defenses you'll see in the country. All right, passing down. Let's see what happens in the middle of the field. Gonna run it instead with Green. Again, Green I like it. Because Dana Bible and NC State now again stays ahead of schedule. They keep the third down manageable. Instead of making a third and long throwing in completion, you know, third and six. Which is a good range if the quarterback does run. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It's more likely to get the first down. You have way more plays in your playbook for this type of situation. Wolfpack still looking for his first big play from the wide receiver tonight. Gonna get another run from Wilson. First down and out of bounds. Russell Wilson. Five straight third down situations that Russell Wilson has converted with his legs. Mark Stoops is saying, you've got to be kidding me. They only rush four. Now the key guy is 29. Watch the tight end get to the middle of the field. Right behind and gets right in the line in the vision of the middle linebacker. Florida State has gotten in trouble tonight up front when they've tried twisting and stunting. Guys have gotten out of their lanes. I wouldn't be so surprised if they just pin their ears back and just start bull rushing forward. They're getting wild and out of control. Florida State rush defense giving up more than it usually does. Washington trying to bull his way into Seminole territory. And Russell Wilson has taken this game over now with his ability to run the football. He's doing everything, both throwing and running. You know, really, I think we're watching his maturation. Started the first half 6 of 14, but look at the competitive fire. Yelling at his guys, leading his guys. Christian Ponder had his team on top at halftime. He had the fire going. The great run for the touchdown with the ball to the pylon. Russell Wilson came out and responded. Hunter hasn't been on the field very much in the second half. He's having to watch his counterpart lead another drive in the third quarter. This time the Seminoles had him and they let him get away. Russell gets rid of it. Wide open first down and the catch. Wilson escaping traffic and he found Asa Watson, Ben Watson's brother for the big game. Yeah, Mark Stoops has to be wondering what do I have to do? I've got my guys in their lanes, they push, they broke the pocket down and then the athleticism takes over. This reminds me of Eli Manning hitting David Tyree in the Super Bowl a few years back against the Patriots with Wilson's ability to keep the play alive and find a target downfield. Wilson out in the flat and he's got his man complete to Stephen Howard. Now we're to get it down close to the 20-yard line. And so they're just right now, they're in sync. Dana Bible talking about that stay in the now and being focused and in the zone on 70 of 83 snaps in a game. Right now, Wilson's there. Do you see that? They blitz on the inside and he throws it to the out. He hasn't been predictable with his play call. And that's the key against Mark Stoops and Florida State's defense. If you line up behind the center nine yards every snap, you're going to get nailed. Green. He slipped, Mustafa stayed up, and he turned that into a very positive run. And we may have a flag down at the end for Miglio. Having some choice words with Terrence Parks. Get Jake out of there and get Terrence away from the fray. Jeff Flanagan's been a busy guy tonight. And personal fouls, the indication against the pack. During the run, personal foul, number 86 on the offense. 15 yards from the spot in the foul. Still second down. That's Jay Smith, the wide receiver, junior from Norfolk. Didn't see what, what Jay did. Got nabbed by the officials. Now, NC State has owned the football in the, in the second half. So if we look at this number right here, 15 
minutes over that in the second half already compared to only three minutes. That's actually not possible because no, I was going to. Yeah. 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 You're using that Canadian <laughs> math that's again, not, right? That's that, that's that Mayday stuff, that Nostradamus <laughs> stuff. But you know, <laughs> this, is long. this is the first time. <laughs> I think a Tom, a, a Tom the first time a Tom O'Brien's offense in the four years he's been here has led in time of possession throughout the course of the season. They've owned the football now in the third quarter. And this will be the final play of the third quarter, and it is not a productive one for Mustafa Green. Green was stopped by Bjorn Werner, and fourth quarter is coming up, and it was a great fourth quarter for North Carolina State. What a finish we have from Raleigh when you come back. Just about set to start the fourth quarter here in Raleigh, Florida State and North Carolina State tied at 21 after the pack put a couple of touchdowns on the board in the third quarter. There is a new number one team in the nation and for the fourth straight week it must go on the road for a tough conference contest. Heisman frontrunner Cameron Newton leads Auburn against Jeremiah Masoli at Ole Miss. College football primetime on ESPN2 Saturday at 6 Eastern. Auburn and Ole Miss also available online and on your phone. We know what Newton's done, but Masoli's coming off his best game as a Rebel, throwing for over 300 yards and running for nearly 100. The Rebels lost to Arkansas. 14th time in the last 16 BCS standings that an SEC team has been number one. There's a number for you. Won the last four national championships. Russell Wilson on the first play of the fourth quarter trying to convert a third and 22. Wilson throwing it down complete. Jarvis Williams makes the catch. First down, Wolfpack. Another example here of Russell Wilson just taking over, able to scramble, get outside the pocket. Florida State cannot keep him contained. What, you know what? They, they rushed three. They dropped one into a fire zone to, to spy. And, and it just didn't work. You buy too much time, he throws it down the field. So it's danged if you do, danged if you don't. He had a wide open receiver on a shallow cross, which I where I thought he was going, but nice back shoulder throw to Williams. Wilson keeps it himself, and he is slammed to the turf. Mr. Alexander. Some of the Wolfpack crowd wanting a horse collar call. So Russell Wilson continues. He said he wanted to like the challenge of going against Mark Stoops. And Stoops keeps battling, giving him different looks. And Russell Wilson continues to answer the call. You can see just the competitive nature and the way he plays. It's almost palpable, a competitive fire. Wilson. Firing intercepted. Picked off and going the other way. Xavier Rhodes, the freshman, and another turnover in the red zone for Wilson. I'm not so sure this isn't on the wide receiver, but it's definitely a miscommunication between quarterback and receiver. There's a corner coverage out on the flat. The receiver does one thing and then takes off to do another. Russell Wilson trying to throw a slant route to his left side. His receiver thinks he's running a slow go. Daryl Davis puts his foot in the ground as if it's a slant and up. And it's the freshman Xavier Rhodes able to jump in front of that football. You're right, Craig, a miscommunication. And the freshman who the coaching staff told us had to have a big game tonight makes a big play in the fourth quarter. Wilson's 10th interception of the season. Thompson has it, Nate Irving all over him. I don't know about you guys, but Nate Irving had that serious automobile wreck. Just blew his body up and had to come back. And, and he looks like he's playing like the old Nate Irving now, right? This is the automobile that you were talking about, Craig. It happened in June of 2009. He was returning to campus from his parents' house, about an hour drive or so, and he was about a half hour or so outside of Raleigh in a very serious accident, compound fracture of his leg, broken ribs, punctured lung, missed the entire 2009 season, and really is just now rounding back into full speed. Ponder flag down in the backfield, probably going to have a hold. And the Seminoles can't seem to get untracked. Artie Augustin is on the pressure. Holding 77 offense. 
10 yards previous spot. Still second down. Let's see if you Sanders call for the hole. See so if you think about it, what do you think, Jesse? Is he playing back what he was? Oh, he, he's, he, you know, they say he's still not 100%, but his speed and athleticism is just remarkable. You know, Nate Irvin missed 644 days between his last game in 2008 and the first game this year. There was nobody that was hungrier to get this season started. And Nate Irvin's been off the charts all season long for them. I just think he just looks more like football speed. I think much better than when we were here in week three when they played Cincinnati. Ponder has the ball batted down. Audie Augustin, who was applying the pressure last time, was back there to deflect that one. And how smart was Augustin on the backside to expect looking for this play? Is that coaching or what? We talked about sudden change a couple times. How about NC State now after a big turnover deep down in Florida State territory, coming out, raising their intensity level, Third in California for FSU. Well, Russell Wilson picked up 29 on third and 22 a few moments ago. Let's see what Christian Ponder has on third and 19. Play it safe. Burt Reed. Ponder trying to get a block. Burt Reed, first down. Reed reverse field and got a great block from Ty Jones and it was a safe pass. Reed turned it into a 30 yard gain. On the previous play, Audie Augustin did his job and stayed at home and was disciplined. Now let's watch red jerseys and see the pursuit and chasing Reed on the outside. This is a dynamite receiver with a lot of open field moves. This is the first time in four third downs. Finally, Florida State converting without a penalty. And look at all the gold helmets getting downfield into the second level. Well, you said it was third in California, look which I've block. never heard before. But they went third into Alaska. It's a Sean Paytonism. <laughs> <laughs> Ponder plenty of time. Christian's going to run it out of there. He gets into NC State territory. Latanya McGill making the tackle. Again, you're talking and watching two teams. One team leading the division. Another team fighting for a chance to get into a tie at the top of their division. Just two quarterbacks that I think are competing at a very high level right now. Watching Russell Wilson and Christian Ponder. This was a duel last year. It's a duel again today. It was 45-42 last year. Florida State scoring in the waning moments with Burt Reed on a run. Reed just made a huge play in this game. Converting a third and 19. Seminoles keeping it on the ground as Thompson, his great speed. He's inside the 25 yard line. Earl Wolf makes a tackle, and here come the Knolls. Bread and butter run. The old zone stretch to the left side. And Thompson, very patient, great runner with good vision. But watch how they block. Look at the outside. Jesse, you just circled him. Bo Relaford doing an amazing job on Adi Coyle, getting that hole open for the running back to run through. You know, the one problem NC State has had on defense has been giving up big plays, both in the passing game and the running game. It's biting him again tonight. And last run for 26. Thompson will try it again, bouncing to the outside. He'll get inside the 20 or a wolf on the tackle. NC State's defense has gotten burned this year when teams have run into their blitz. You go back against Virginia Tech in their loss in that game. In the second half, Virginia Tech had two long touchdown runs running into the NC State blitz. It's feast or famine on defense when you want to send a lot of pressure. That's John Tenuta upstairs, the linebacker coach here. And, and John is one of those guys that he's talking with Mike Archer down on the field, the defensive coordinator. And he's trying to feel the defense. They're trying to figure out what to do once they get inside this red zone where they've been good. Second and seven. Turning to the outside is Jones. And Jones will not make it to the first down marker. Brandon Bishop along with Nate Irving. That Florida State offensive line has taken it to the next level. They are so good at getting off their original blocks and getting to the linebackers. Irving is down from the play after assisting on the tackle. He's been all over the field. So the training staff comes out to check out the fine middle linebacker of North Carolina State. They cannot afford to lose Nate Irving for any amount of plays. Defensive coordinator Mike Archer told us when Nate Irving is not on the field, 
teams score points against us. And at this juncture in the game, tied deep down in their red zone, they have to have their defensive leader on the field. Mm. Irving is sitting up now. Tough run by Jones, and Irving was the first one to get there. Bishop came calling across the across the top. As Irving's starting to gather his wits. We, we saw him in the Cincinnati game here earlier in the season on a Thursday night, have to leave the field. But he came back after a few plays and really inspired and lifted up the defense. All right, here we go. Monster third down right now. Third and three for NC State. If you can hold them to a field goal here after the interception by Russell Wilson, I count that as a win. You know what I you know what I think about strongly here if I'm Jimbo Fisher? And it works all the time is the designed quarterback run for Christian Ponder. Get him on the perimeter of the field, give him a pass run combo, maybe. Ponder's run for two touchdowns tonight. Both quarterbacks have been effective running the football. There it is. Ponder looking for room, and he's found it. Christian bouncing outside. Now, he had some room. Probably had the first down. He might have given it back trying to get wide. Absolutely he had it. I mean, all he's doing is getting north, and he's got the first down, if not more. And Christian Ponder was licking his chops before he got the snap because it was going to be a big zone look. Mm. He just keeps stretching it outside, and that speed able to catch up with him. And now Florida State Ooh. having to attempt a field goal. Boy, he had it. Go north. Oh, what a tactical error by senior quarterback, and it's going to bring on Dustin Hopkins for a 31-yard field goal attempt. He is a Groza candidate, one of the finest kickers in the nation. And he has put Florida State on top, 24-21. So NC State avoids giving up the touchdown after the turnover, but now they trail the Knolls by three. 24-21 after the Florida State field goal, but Jimbo Fisher telling Christian Ponder out. What we needed was for you to go straight and yeah. take, take that crease and get the first down. You know why it's called quarterback draw? It's designed to go inside. Ponder tried to bounce it to the outside. C.J. Wilson made the tackle and forced the Knowles to attempt a field goal, which was good. North Carolina State's leader on defense, Nate Irving, being checked out on the sideline. He was hurt on the play prior to Ponder's third down run. It's as if they're working on Nate's right hand. Taping it up. We'll see if we'll see 56 back on the field. When Florida State gets it back right now, North Carolina State, nine and change to go in the game. Three point deficit. Dustin Hopkins drives it into the end zone. He won't get the touchback this time. Bringing it out is Washington. And James Washington took a big hit as he got it to the 30. Well, ESPN is your NBA destination Friday night. Got a doubleheader for you. First at 8 o'clock, Dwight Howard and the Magic against the interstate rivals, Miami Heat. Don't know if you heard, they have LeBron James now and Chris Bosh, too, to go with Wayne Wade. Lakers and Suns at 10.30 will follow NBA Friday as part of the Kia tip-off week on ESPN. Kia NBA countdown at 7. This is how the big three have done in the first two games of the Heat. And, and Reese, don't know if you heard or not, but the they Boston did. Celtics did beat them the other day. They did. Thank you very much. Spoiled opening night. It'll take a little while you guys to mess together. I'm sure they will. Great success on the Olympic team together. First down run from Green. All right, here's Dustin Hopkins. He very good all-around athlete. You got Mr. Alexander slapping him around and look at old Dustin get in there. Afraid to get his shoulder down. Put the war bonnet down. <laughs> little chin music. You know, you know what's been interesting to me with NC State offensively? Here's a team that was averaging 312 passing yards a game, seventh best in the country. They've almost run the ball twice as many times as they've thrown it to Wilson had completed nine in a row for the interception into the last drive. Green gets the first down and crosses the 45. I tell you one thing Mark Stoops is going to say if he's honest with himself at the end of this game is that my defense might have been out of their foxholes at times, but NC State's runners, and especially Moose Green, used his vision in that ball game. NC State did not have a running back with a career start at the start of the year. Dana Bible told us as a play caller, he's learning more and more each and every game about his young backs. Mustafa Green, a true freshman, playing big in the biggest game of the year. 
didn't see much of Green in the first half. It was mainly Dean Haynes and Washington. But Green's got lathered up in the second. He'll catch one out of the backfield. And he'll be knocked down immediately by Bradham. We've seen very versatile true freshman backs. Marcus Lattimore of South Carolina. We'll stop for Green tonight. Guys that can get the tough yards inside, but can also catch the football in the perimeter of the field. Yeah, I, I, that was one thing that I had on my notes coming in was that he had 18 receptions entering the game. And I thought, okay, that's pretty impressive when you got a freshman that you can leave in the game in a passing situation. Now he's shown this coaching staff that he has the ability to run the football very well with control but explosion. Green again. Into Seminole territory, and this time he won't fall forward. Kendall Smith, LaMarcus Joyner on the hit. It will be third and five. They will have a spy on this play for Russell Wilson. Guaranteed or the D-line, will. All, there will be no stunts or games. They're going to keep him in the pocket. Well, okay, now the last time they did this and they had the big throw down the field, they rushed three and dropped one off into coverage. They dropped Brandon Jenkins with his athleticism as the spy. He's at the top of the field. We'll see if the left side of the offensive line, 49, we'll see if he drops back. At one point, Wilson converted five straight third downs with his legs. This is what he's going to with his arm. Howard makes the catch in this. Seminoles give it up on third down as the pack moves the chains. That's a great read by Russell Wilson, understanding he's got man-to-man -man coverage and his receiver Stephen Howard in the slot, working the flat route, getting great separation for an easy completion for the quarterback to move the sticks. Okay, there's nothing wrong with throwing underneath like that right there, Jesse, is it? You know, you know the down the distance. His longest pass tonight, 22 yards. He's not throwing the ball down the field, but he is keeping control of that clock. Clock, which is headed towards six minutes to go. Florida State with a three-point lead. Washington gets it inside the 40. Now how important is it to control that clock for Florida State? And all six wins this year, they've led the game in time of possession, but you're seeing NC State's ability to keep grinding it out. They have the lead in that right now. This could potentially be the final possession of the game, the way they're driving. Well, and again, we're, we're talking about a battle for the division lead in the ACC. Clemson coming on. Played really well last week against Georgia Tech. Again, the conference just strong. Washington straining. Alexander there to keep him from making it to the 35-yard line. Be another third down. North Carolina State has been perfect in the second half on third down. Seven for seven. It's a good thing Florida State had 12 days off before this game because of the time of possession. Their defense has been able to hang in there better because of the fresh legs. 12 of 16 on the night against the nation's 16th ranked third down defense. Hmm. Well, it's coming. Wilson takes a hit, throws it up. Jarvis Williams was going over. Reed tried to run it down for Florida State. It's Christian Jones coming after Wilson. See some linebackers here in the middle of the field. It's called a green dog by number 13, Nigel Bradham, where he pretends he's dropping back in coverage to try to force a tight end or a running back to set up a block, which allows a free rusher to come off the edge, which is Christian Jones. Stoops brought a lot of folks on that one, didn't he? <laughs> And it's Jake Vermiglio, the left tackle, the senior. Integral part of the offensive line protects Wilson's blind side. Vermiglio is banged up. Nate Irving over on the trainer's table right now. So it's been a hard fought battle right now as we check in with Jim Brown. Jim, what do you have on Nate Irving's condition? Well, I can confirm that he has a right thumb sprain. Now, the trainers have taped him up, but I've been watching him here on the sideline, and he is wincing in pain. This is a big guy, and he is really hurting. They said he is questionable for a return, but uh, I, I think he's going to be playing in some pain if he does. All right, Jen, here is the play in which Irving got hurt. Irving was trying to make the tackle on Ty Jones, his teammate Brandon Bishop. Amen. His buddy's face mask came right in on that hand. Know that feeling well, and it's just tough. All right, fourth down. Tchaikovsky's never even tried a field goal longer than 50 yards, so O'Brien's going to go for it. Needs four. Wilson firing. Got four and more. Davis on his way. Stop just short of the goal line, but the third down has been converted, and NC State's on the doorstep. Mark 
Stoops right there just said, you know what, I rolled the dice. I tried to come with a lot of people on this, and I got burned by it. The ball got out of the quarterback's hand. This is the same play that Russell Wilson threw the interception to Daryl Davis on earlier in the quarter. This time, Daryl Davis runs the correct route, uses that big six-foot-four frame to get in front and shield the corner on the slant throw. Wilson coming through on this drive. Let's see if they go sneak to the left. They do. This time, Florida State was ready for it. <laughs> Finally. Kendall Smith, 29, that middle linebacker said, okay, I, I, I've been to class a few times. Y'all are three for three. I'm coming over there with you. By Kendall Smith. Well, it's like Tom O'Brien wants, wants these guys to get lined up. He wants 12 people. They're trying to get George Bryan on the field. A lot of confusion. Yeah. Russell Wilson with his hands up in the air. Like T.J. Graham over on the near side too, trying to find out if he's on or off the line of scrimmage. Wilson this time will try to the right. I don't think Russell got in that time either. I'll tell you what though, the clock continues to wind down. Then you get that. That doesn't have the feeling though of the team who has the ball last wins it kind of deal. Well, this. Oddly enough, Craig, it was almost at this point last year exactly with 350 left in the game. North Carolina State scored a touchdown to go up by four. Florida State came back down and won the game. They're just inside, 350 mark right now. And the Wolfpack looking at third and goal. George Bryan is in the game. Asa Watson, too, a tight end. Going with bigger people up front. Washington's a running back. He'll get a shot at it. And James is stopped at the goal line. All right. Now, you're about an inch away. You can tie the game, or you can try to get the lead. That, that ball never got to the goal line, the point of the goal line. I think you kick it here. I agree with that. You kick it and make no, sure that you get to overtime. Extend the game. Absolutely. But that defensive line at Florida State, three plays in a row, penetration to stop the run. So, Tchaikovsky. We'll have an extra point length, actually a little shorter than extra point length field goal. And the officials are going to stop it. NC State going to call the timeout. Thinking about it? Uh, maybe huh? so. Woo. Tying field goal in the offing. We'll see when you come back. ESPN's College Football Primetime is served by Applebee's. See what's new on Applebee's two for 20 menu. Classics you love and new flavors you'll crave. And in part by Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. You see some of the great defensive players in Florida State history. Deion Sanders there. You saw the Sunshine Scooter Lee Corso off the top. And this batch of Seminoles right now needs to stop NC State from getting about three inches. Maybe a little more than that. Fourth and goal. 244 remaining. Tom O'Brien changed his mind after sending out the field goal unit, used the timeout, and now the pack will see if they can get the go-ahead score. Wilson gonna throw for her. a touchdown, George Bryan. The joint is up for grabs in Raleigh, but be very careful. The Wolf Pack in the same situation. If this extra point is good that they were a year ago when Florida State went down the field and won it in the last minute and a half. Tchaikovsky to make it a four point lead for the Pack. It's good. You have to commit so many bodies to stopping the run down on the goal line. Right side of the offensive line, tight end. He's going to sneak through. It's hard to defend it all. Get George Bryan just on the corner round. It's a great play fake by Russell Wilson. How about the confidence by Tom O'Brien, his junior quarterback? George Bryan puts the pack ahead by four. Russell Wilson just threw a touchdown pass to George Bryan and North Carolina State has a 28-24 lead on Florida State. 240 remaining on the clock. Now the Wolfpack, they've been down this road before. Fourth quarter lead, less than five minutes to go on Virginia Tech. 
couldn't hold it. Fourth quarter lead against East Carolina in their last game, couldn't hold it. Can they hold on and give Florida State its first ACC loss tonight? Zukowski getting set to kick it away. Greg Reed and Chris Thompson, both dangerous speedsters deep for the Seminoles. Reed. Greg Reed gets it out close to the 30-yard line. Saturday night football continues. A Pac-10 showdown. The Ducks part of Road Black Block Saturday going on the road to take on USC. Some will see Ohio State and Minnesota. Saturday night football presented by Southwest Airlines, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Some will see Terrell Pryor and the 11th ranked Buckeyes. Most of the nation will see the Ducks and the Trojans. Go to ESPN.com search maps to see where you can find your game. So 2.33 remaining, Christian Ponder trying to lead the Seminoles back. Ponder has his first pass batted down. McGeo has had a fine night on the defensive front. Florida State has not won an ACC title in four consecutive years. And Christian Ponder told us he thought he had a great opportunity to turn this thing around for Florida State, get back into the ACC title picture. He's got an opportunity to leave his mark and his legacy here. That legacy may be determined by how he plays here on this final drive. NC State with their star on defense back in the game. Nate Irving, 56, middle linebacker. He faked the blitz, backed out. Ponder fired and caught. What a great catch by Willie Halstead, first down. In every game, in every season, there's a play that you can go back on and you can put your finger on and say, that was a play. That was a difference maker play. Look at the focus and the hand strength of Halstead. Ponder hit as he throws and he skipped it out in the direction of Burt Reed. It was Nate Irving applying the heat. Two minutes, 12 seconds left. You have three timeouts. Your entire offense is up and active right now. Everything's available. I mean, you need a touchdown. So you call plays accordingly, knowing that it's four downs. You're going to chip away. Take your time. Get down the field. Seminoles have beaten the pack three straight in the last two years. Close games both times. Burt Reed scored the late go-ahead touchdown. Keep an eye on 83. He's the inside slot receiver, bottom of your screen. Ponder to run it. Christian gets just across the 50, and now he's looking at a third down as the clock will wind down for two minutes. But, but that's okay. That additional pressure of Ponder being able to run in a circumstance like that gets him the five that he needed. Put so much more stress on this defense now to have to keep an eye on it. every snap. Third and five. Taiwan Easterling, his first catch of the night. Easterling still on his feet. Down to the 21-yard line. Give Earl Wolf the safety a lot of credit for just holding on for dear life. I thought Easterling was going to break that tackle and take it to score. Okay, now we've seen Russell Wilson step up and make plays. That play right there by Ponder throwing on time, knowing where his receiver was and was going to be on time. Nice job. A little roll on the sideline. Stepping out of bounds to stop the clock is Rodney Smith. It's a nice play call by Jimbo Fisher, taking advantage again of that soft cushion outside by these NC State cornerbacks. You know what else it did? He moved the pocket. You know, he's helping his offensive line out by getting the quarterback out behind the pocket and moving it out of there. Second and five. Ponder unloads into traffic. He was looking for Halstead. Wolf is there to break it up. The red zone is an area of the field. Defensive coaches can teach their defensive backs to be more aggressive because there's a, there's an end line behind you. There's not as much space to cover, so you can take more chances, be more aggressive down here. This is an offense that's used to scoring touchdowns when they get down there in the red zone. 23 out of 34 coming in. Binder on third down. He can run for the first down. Cuts it up inside, this time gets north and south, unlike the previous third down run, and it's a first down for the Knowles. Which was going to be and could be a critical play in this game, but he learned. Jimbo Fisher got on him and said, hey, get north and south when you get up in there like that. It was a smart play by Ponder because his wide receiver fell down on the play, so instead of doing anything funny and forcing it, 
He just put his foot in the ground. Headed toward a minute. Noel's going to run it. That is Jones. Jones gets inside the five. Now you've got to use the timeout if you're NC State. Absolutely. Get over there, Tom O'Brien. Start using those because it's going to chew down if you don't. Florida State calls timeout to help him there. Well, Ponder, Ponder looks like he might have knocked around a little bit and needed a break to get his composure. Ty Jones over 100 yards tonight. It'll be second down and goal. Florida State trying to regain the lead under a minute to play. Florida State, North Carolina State delivering a finish. Wolfpack with a four-point lead, but the Seminoles a mere four yards away from the go-ahead score. 53.2 seconds left. It's second down and goal. Ty Jones is the tailback. Ponder put it on the ground. I think Nate Irving's got it. What an unbelievable turn of events. Flag comes down late. I'm going to guess on sportsmanlike conduct. Really is a fumble. First state, first down for North Carolina State. After the play, in sportsmanlike conduct, number 35. Removing the helmet, the penalty is half the distance to the goal. North Carolina State will keep the ball. First down. Nothing is ever automatic in football. The tight end is wide open. Ponder's going to set his feet and throw a lob pass to the left corner of the end zone to Bo Ralford. It's a layup. This is a gimme. It's a game of inches, Craig. Ty Jones gets a little too close on the ball fake. Ponder has his head downfield looking for his tight end. You know and the what ball he comes out. He faked it to the fullback. He, he had his eyes, Ponder did, downfield to the tight end, anticipating the throw and didn't fake to the right guy. That's the second time tonight Florida State had a wide open receiver for a touchdown and Christian Ponder fumbled. NC State needed a miracle stop on defense. And they had a break go their way. Fisher's going to use his timeouts and hope that maybe NC State can't execute the snap. But the celebration is underway. The Wolfpack players, if they can hang on for 38 seconds, they are tied with Florida State in the lost column of the ACC Atlantic and would have the head-to-head -head tiebreaker. And oh, by the way, they would be bowl eligible, but I think you would know that that's coming with Tom O'Brien's team. 38 seconds left in this one. We've got more football Saturday afternoon. Michigan State going on the road to Kennick Stadium. Missouri to Nebraska. You can see it on ABC or ESPN. 3.30 Eastern time, 12.30 on the West Coast. ABC College Football presented by K Jewelers. Both games can be seen nationally. Just log on to ESPN.com, go maps, figure out where to see the game that you'd like to watch. Wilson. Going to take the knee. Seminoles have one timeout left. If you heard a loud Flag. roar coming from Clemson, <laughs> you think they weren't excited? Playing Maryland too. Maryland's sitting there two and one. But you know, I like the way Clemson's the playing play. right now. Sportsmanlike conduct number 99, 15 yards, first down. You know, if NC State's able to hold on to this, the road down the stretch. Really doesn't get too much easier. They have three of their final four games going on the road, starting at Clemson, at North Carolina, at Maryland. Again, Tom O'Brien talks about each and every game being an ACC championship game. That will be the case for NC State as they go down this stretch run to try to hold on to that number one seed in the Atlantic Division. I come away from tonight highly impressed with the poise and the execution of NC State. Florida State was playing really good football coming into this game. Well, Tom O'Brien had warned his team not to be caught up in what might have been. They had a 17-point lead on Virginia Tech and let it get away. Fourth quarter lead on the road at East Carolina and lost. So close to being undefeated. But this will wipe away a lot of those mistakes. 
as Tom O'Brien in North Carolina State come from behind and they beat Florida State 28 24 as soon as this clock hits zero in about 20 seconds as you see a devastated Christian Ponder and we had the game winning touchdown pass in his sights and we have the ball knocked out of his hands by a teammate Nate Irving bad hand and all able to recover the fumble and seal up the victory for the Wolfpack. This is a program defining win here for Tom O'Brien in his tenure as head coach at North Carolina State. For Christian Ponder, tremendous player, tremendous effort today. So great competitive spirit and fire. Let his team down, put him in a position to win the football game. But great, like you said, the game is very unpredictable. Well, at the end of the game, these two teams who played so hard, and a couple of unsportsmanlike conduct penalties late in the game, you see the two teams getting together. Jake Vermiglio is in the middle of it. Looks as if Washington, the running back, was in trying to be peacemaker. And North Carolina State will celebrate the 28-24 victory as we check in with Jen Brown, who has our Wrangler five-star player of the game with her. Russell, you see Florida State on the four-yard line. Your defense comes up with a big fumble. What's going through your head at that moment? Belief. Believe that they're going to make a stop. You know, I saw anybody on the sideline. Just believe they're going to make a stop. They, Florida State's got to get a touchdown. They're a great team. We got a great defense, and uh, they, you know they've shown up the, the whole game, the whole year. So they made a big play, and we came up with the ball and won the game. Now let's talk about your play on the other end. You got fourth and inches. You're going to go for a field goal, and then you guys to go for the go-ahead touchdown. What was the play call on that, and why'd you guys think you could pull that off? Well, you know, co coach had confidence, confidence in us to get it in. And, you know, we're on a home field. You know, on the, on the one-inch yard line. If we don't get it, that's, you know, we, we, we had to get it there. And that was important for us, to our team, for our program in the future, and, and for our season right now. You made some great plays tonight with your feet. What were you seeing out there on defense that were, you know, allowing you to be so mobile? You know, they're a great cover team, and they also had a great defensive line. They're putting pressure on me, and I just tried to, had to, get, tried to get positive yards, you know, one play at a time, and we did that, and we were successful tonight. You guys talked about how important this game was. You said it's the most important game in Coach O'Brien's tenure here. What does it feel to come away with the win tonight? You know, it feels great for us. You know, that was a big home win for us and a big game for us, big for the ACC. But, you know, at the same time, you know, we got we got a big you know, game next weekend. And, you know, we got, we got to play one game at a time, one week at a time, one practice at a time, one play at a time. And we did that tonight. All right. Thanks, Russell. Reese. And it is Clemson coming up next week and now nine of the ten games between these two have been decided by ten points or less. And last year it was Russell Wilson trying to win it for North Carolina State who threw an interception in the end zone in the waning seconds of a game and this year it's Ponder who had the turnover and allowed North Carolina State to seal the victory. It's a final from Raleigh. The Wolfpack beating the Seminoles 28-24. Sports Center is coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Craig James, Jesse Palmer, Jeff Brown, and our entire Thursday night college football crew, I'm Reese Davis saying good night from Raleigh. The Wolfpack alive and a four-point winner.